everybody. How you doing? Bobby Rose Beef here. It's Jigs and it's Bigs, and we have ourselves one hell of a show here for you this morning or evening, depending on when you're listening. We talk uh, about a bunch of different stuff, actually. We, we talk a little bit about uh, an amazing local organization that uh, we will have represented on the show uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, but we talk about some of their efforts they've been doing to kind of improve the local environment and uh, some ways that you can kind of get out there and, uh, and connect or start your own organization to improve your waterways. We also have uh, a little bit of a discussion in- impromptu about uh, uh, tungsten or lead-free EWG-style Ned Rigs. I uh, had an interview with a guest, and we want to talk about some of the options that are out there. And uh, if you're looking for a lead alternative, if you're in one of those states and you like an EWG-style head, or you're just looking for some tungsten for some extra sensitivity, you might want to check this sucker out. We talk about the upcoming Chronic Trips tournament that's happening on the 1st of February. It's a multi-species tournament. Good stuff. Everybody going to want to get involved in and uh, the weather it's getting cold here in the northeast again it's dipping a little bit this is going to be a brutal brutal week you know we're just going to do the best that we can with it and and hopefully get on some fish We'll, we'll see how it all works, everybody. I'm looking forward to an amazing spring. I know I've been getting feedback from a lot of you guys co- contacting me saying, that I'm looking forward to spring, looking forward to getting my kayak out there on the water. Some of you guys have new boats, and you're looking to get those out there for the first time. Really, really excited about making that all happen. Can't tell you guys how much we appreciate you. We crossed a mile marker in uh, just the end of last week. We're at over 8,000 followers on uh, Instagram, and we got to thank you very, very much for it. So, guys... Get ready, get yourself a nice uh, beverage of your choice, and uh, we're going to have ourselves a great little show. I got Sean the Fisherman coming up right after this on Jigs and Bigs. Hey, good morning, everybody. That is the way we like to start Tuesday mornings around here anyway. It is, uh, it's bright and early. I got myself some coffee. I'm wearing my comfortable half flannel. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's chilly out, and uh, which is great for uh, ice fishing, you know, and, and there's some uh, good ice fishing events that are coming up we can talk about. I got Sean the Fisherman on the line, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit of fishing jigs and big style. Sean, how are you doing today, buddy? How, how's things going for you? I'm just as warm as you. You got your flannel on. I am yeah. wearing a, a gift on my feet right now. I am wearing my lobster slippers. My oldest son kindly got me some slippers. They are lobsters. There is nothing more New England than no. lo- novelty lobster slippers. It's no- I feel novelty, it. <laughs> novelty lobster anything. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's there's nothing more New England than that. We got a good one though today. Um, it's been it's it's been a, a an insane week. We've had a crazy week. Uh, the episode that dropped last time is just you know people have been listening like crazy. Uh, there's been some really great feedback. Um, there's been a couple of housekeeping things, jigs and bigs wise, that have been going on that have made life so much easier. So one of the things I just want to go and, and give this thing a mention because I think it's very helpful is an app. It's called Calendly. Uh, it's basically, it, it, it's a, a scheduler that integrates with your Google calendar or your, you know, Microsoft calendar, whatever it is that you're using your Apple calendar, it'll, it'll integrate with that, but you can share links when folks are asking, Hey, so when are you available to do X, Y, and Z? Let's say you want to book some time, you know, with your friends at fishing, you can enter in your schedule, what generally works for you. And then you just send them a link and they can pick whatever time they want. It makes life so much easier. So I've been using this to book podcast guests. I also sent a link over to Sean and uh, he went and booked because you know with he's got uh, some appointments with school and stuff and everything so we've been kind of juggling production times here and there and I'll tell you it, it it's kind of nice it worked out really great because of this app I'm now like weeks and going into months ahead of uh, of guests as far as being able to put great interviews together and it's made my life so much easier so before we get like too into anything I definitely want to, uh, to mention this app it is awesome and I should mention it's free like I downloaded it for free and just started using it. It was just uh, unbelievable. I'm sure there's some paid features in there, stuff that kind of limits you. But so far for the free stuff, it's been working fantastic for me. So pretty freaking amazing. Now, I did absolutely zero fishing, but I have been doing a lot of uh, tackle maintenance and organizing. Um, Sean, what about you? Uh, you have Did you do any ice fishing at all? Did you get out or no? No, I'm still uh, the only one time was what three weeks ago, and yeah, that was that was less ice fishing for me than more grilling on the ice. 
Um, I like ice fishing, but yeah. I, it's not really my priority. If I can get out on the ice during a nice day, I'm fine with that. But like, you know, I'm an open water guy. Yep, same. I I, I I really do feel like I want to. I want to love it. You know what I mean? But it's. Uh, just, you know, the, the, the window, I think of when I started thinking about ice fishing was a little bit too close to there actually being safe ice. And I wasn't able to get the cold weather gear and time all in order. And then just recently the curveball of mod kayak mods has kind of, you know, taken over. So now I'm like focused on spring a hundred percent. Cause we're, we're probably about like six, six weeks away from yeah. open water. Um, yep. and, and, you know, at, at this point I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, suck it up and make the best of it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty bananas, man. I did have a little snafu with, uh, some, some gear that I had, uh, had picked up. I wasn't going to mention this, but the, those, I, I had ordered more of those Flambo uh, tough tainer, the 3,700 size boxes. Uh, but I ordered the ones that actually have the dividers in them. And I, I ordered them from Amazon, like a three pack. And uh, one of them, or, or two of them rather, are cracked pretty badly. So I'm in the process of doing an exchange because I think, I, I, I kind of think I want to be a little bit more organized. You know, have a main box to work out of, but also have something that I can keep jigs and, and my other hard baits a little bit more organized in and, you know, put all that together. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're coming up on a big cold snap here too. Yeah, uh, weather wise. Oh, this week's supposed then, to be brutal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So so yesterday, um, one of the times that, you know, and honestly, this is probably why I haven't ice fished so much over the past two to three years. One of the one of the things that I love to do is ice fish in the pond in my backyard. Yep. Because I don't need to drag a whole ton of gear out there. All I need to bring is a fishing gear instead of a grill and this and that and the other thing. So I can just grill on my my back deck and you know, if I want to, I, I got a fire pit, I can light a fire and sit yep. there and watch the tip ups and it's not a big deal. But um, I checked the ice yesterday at my pond, and it was an inch and a half. Now, my pond tends to take a long time to freeze, mm -hmm. and it's uh, – I'm on, the, I'm on the, like, the northwest corner of the lake, so that's always the warmest, and yeah. I might have more ice on the rest of the lake. I don't know. I wasn't walking out there to try it when I found an inch and a half yeah, in that's, front of my house. You don't want to mess with that. Yeah, so if, if we get some ice, uh, if we, you know, this whole week's going to be pretty nasty. If it if it gets up to four or five inches, I'm, I may go get some shiners, throw some tip-ups out one day, but it's yeah. going to be in my backyard, you know? No, I don't blame it. And that's, that is, is honestly, that is quite the luxury. There was a, a year where I had uh, lived on uh, Lake Thompson in Palmer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it was one of these things where I look back now and actually I, I was living there. Uh, my, my best friend had inherited this house and uh, he and I, we had this conversation many, many times after I had moved and he had since sold the property. And he's like, we missed an opportunity. Like we would go out fishing. We went to, actually it was just this summer. We went to Quabbin and and we're fishing and and we we're the entire conversation. We're like, man, that year we totally missed an opportunity living there to take advantage of the fact that we lived right on the lake. You know, and there's yep. some some decent fishing over there. It's a it's a good size. You know, it's a large pond. I'll say. Um, you know, and it was just just one of those things. And that's like, yeah, you have a you have a, a great opportunity there if you want to get some fishing and you're able to at least, you know, even if nothing else, man, you can get out there and test lures. I love that phrase, air quotes, testing out lures. Well, <laughs> I mean, you've you've fished there a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, you know, the water quality isn't exactly you know pristine. Uh, yeah. It's 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 a dirtier body of water. What do they, what do you call it? Stained. Yep. So it's not like you can see what a lot of what's going on, but there's fish in there. I mean. Mm. I have fun. Definitely. It's, it's all right. I, yeah. I honestly, last year, I, I think even from the kayak, I only fished it like twice just because yeah. it's, it's really tough to justify fishing in my backyard when the, yeah. I'm in, I'm in tournaments and none of those fish count because it's a private body of water. That's a, yeah, that's true too. You know, it, it really is. Yeah. That's a, that's a really, really, really good point. Um, I, and just, just to go on that too, because we, you and I talk about this probably once every two, two, three weeks, but yep. like. I say private body of water. Everyone knows you can't own water. It's the access to yeah. the water. There's no public access to this water. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm getting to the point now where I'm the old guy who calls up the cops and yells, get off my lawn. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But, We're all you know, getting there, though. Eventually, it all catches up to us. Hey, I do want to make I, – I normally don't promote upcoming guests because I don't want to drop the ball on anything – or, you know, have something come up. But I'm really, really, really excited about this one guest that we have. And this is especially for our, our local listeners. Um, I have a guest coming up. We're recording 
uh, early next month. So we're recording. Yeah, early next month. I'm recording with Brett Richards uh, and Brett Richards for those local folks that um, they might know that name because Brett is one of the I th- I'm not sure how many folks are involved, but they're involved with the Facebook group. Uh, Make Massachusetts fishing spots great again. And uh, what they're basically doing, it's like a cleanup crew that's been going the some of these like really significantly hit hard spots with uh, litter and just that have just been ravaged with just trash really and they've been getting out there and and doing the work right in my town they've been doing amazing amazing work in Holyoke uh this one spot along the Connecticut River and I mean when I say that they're pulling trash out of there like these guys are doing doing stuff that I would not feel safe doing which is they're going in and grabbing like like uh discarded needles and shit like that like they're getting they're getting into it and they're really really doing something great for the environment so I do kind of want to make mention that uh not only you know for the the local community that that we live in and and you know obviously I I love what they're doing the impact that they've got uh and some of the I think even awareness and uh, motivation they might have given some of the fishing community in like help and assisting because they do some of these big, big uh, events all over the place. You'll hear them doing stuff all the time along the Westfield River, hitting up, you know, some of the some of the really, really popular spots like Red Bridge and things. They'll get out there and help clean them up. Peppermill Pond is another one that I've been at. I've seen their barrels and things. Uh, but they're doing great stuff. But, but there are other people all around this country who who have organizations doing that. So just a shout out, like uh, if if you're in one of those uh, those organizations that's trying to help clean up waterways and stuff, especially as we get into spring and people are going to start getting out and fishing, you know, a lot of these these efforts are going to shift into high gear to get get ahead. I'm sure. So look around in your area if you want to get involved or, or if you can support. Like I know my schedule is is you know pretty open, you know, but it seems like every time they've had like one of these group events or something, I've got something lined up. Um, so if you can, and I think this year I'd, I'd like to, and I'm going to talk to uh, Brett about it during the interview, but I want to know how Jigs and Bigs can help out either with supplies or something like that. Uh, so we're going to you know definitely do that. But I would recommend anybody out there if you care about your waters, look into organizations like this. One that Brett runs, uh, make Massachusetts fishing spots great again. Check out uh, things in your area, or if there isn't one, you can't find anything. Start one up. Start a Facebook group. It will cost you nothing, and go and you know organize some stuff. If you're there, are people that want to help out. So I, I think it's a, it's a very very good thing. They're definitely helping out the local environment, and making a difference. So appreciate that. And actually, I think it all starts at the beginning. Don't be an a hole. <laughs> like what to take in, what you take out. In fact, take out a little bit more if you can. You know, <laughs> if yep. you get snagged up on somebody's line, wrap that line up and throw it in your pocket, and then toss it on the way out. That's I try to do that all the time. I think that starts number one. You know, even before you start a Facebook group or anything. But beyond that, you know, it's like they're doing some good shit. So I think I think they need a little. Uh a little bit of a, a pat on the back for being awesome and, and helping out the local environment. When I saw, did you see the pictures of the stuff they're doing in Holyoke? I was just going to start talking about that. What they did Dude. was that Holyoke or was that Chicopee? It's Holyoke under it's the th- under, under the 391, 391 bridge. 391 bridge. Yep, right under that the was uh, amazing. Yeah, that they, you know what that happens place under the a, bridge. Yeah, that place was a dump. Yep, uh, you couldn't even walk down there. And th- how many garbage bags did they fill? A couple hundred. Oh, yeah, they moved, like, a ridiculous amount of waste out of there. And it's just, like... You know, I mean, whether it's all concentrated on that one area, but but in a river system, like all that trash moves down, and when it gets hung up on something, like you know, you're talking bridge pilings and stuff like that, like they're getting out there and making it happen. There were a couple that I just couldn't believe, but I, it always makes me smile because, like, when I go to, um, like Red Bridge is another one. Red Bridge gets hammered by anglers in our area all the time, and it's super popular. Whether you're a bank angler and you're walking out on the trails around the water, or you know, you're you're in a kayak or a, or <laughs> boating irresponsibly in a wreck boat over there which happens all the time um as we know way too well um you know when you're out there and you see those big blue barrels and they're usually marked with a sticker or like they're marked with marker that they're from make massachusetts fishing spots great again when you see that it's it's all it's nice to know that like hey you know somebody gives a shit about here and I, you know because you do as, as an angler that goes out like if i see a soft plastics wrapper or something i look at that as a gold line because that means i can put other people's trash into a container you know as i find stuff i'll put that in there take it out with me and toss it in the it, I, and I'll say, like, honestly, in the days of, of this whole pandemic, 
Like I've seen masks out there. I've seen stuff. Yeah. And some of that, like, I mean, I do in my box, I keep some hand sanitizer so I can pick up whatever and clean up. But uh, crazy, crazy stuff. I'm getting a report right now by Brock, uh, Brock Jenkins saying solid ice on Hamilton. And uh, I forget what I can't pronounce that other pond off work until Thursday afternoon. Wednesday's my birthday. If anyone's down for some eating and maybe a little fish catching. Uh, okay. Oh, that wasn't a public post. You might want to take him up on that to see what his recipe for bull balls is. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh, my God. I just recorded an interview with uh, another upcoming guest with uh, Rachel Walka. And uh, Rachel's one of the new um, pro staff for Hookshead Hoodlums. And uh, she had, uh, we were having a conversation about, you know, some of the the hot sauce shenanigans and stuff like that. And I I think she's in for the uh, boats and scrotes. Like she game, and game on. She was talking about like I can't wait to get out there and beat all the boys. You know that's the plan. I want to get out there and beat everybody. And I was like, you're really looking to avoid eating Rocky Mountain oysters. She knew exactly what Rocky Mountain oysters were. I was like, okay, good to go. No mystery there. It's gonna be good stuff, man. Um, I do have something I want to jump into. Shoot. Guess what I got? Uh, herpes. Yes. No. Um, there's a brand new. Oh, and it's upside down. The brand <laughs> I was new. I'm gonna start reading it backwards. <laughs> Dark Horse Tackle Box just arrived. They had uh, some some issues with the uh, the good old USPS uh, holding up a few things from arriving. And um, you're not much of a of a of a big swim bait guy, are you? No, I'm not either. I'm really not. So I just want to do an unboxing so that we can talk about this. But if you're okay with it. Sean, yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to give this away in February. I don't, yeah. Yeah, I'd, li- yeah. I'd like to give this sucker away. So um, we're going to go with, uh, let's unbox. Ooh, okay. I just happened to see a bunch of swim baits lying on top here. Okay, so what do we have here? This is a, uh, it's a zero gravity hybrid underspin. It's called the Airdrop. Well, uh, this is, it's 40% lead free. Okay, that's a, that's 40%. All right, that's we're on our bad. way. We're on our way. We're getting there. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Does it give the weight? It doesn't list the color either, but this is a nice natural, like a almost almost like a, a perch. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And there's two of them in here, two different colors. Uh, here's you. Here's you one. like your underspins? I do like my Those underspins. Nice, yeah. I, I will say this: I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the exposed hook underspin, but uh, you know I do feel that um, I, I I I think it's a great sort of finesse way it's a great way to size down a spinnerbait you know and, and kind of make it a little bit more digestible but there's there's a ton of plastics here these are from ramsey baits ramsey baits with some nice uh clear plastic with a blue back a little chartreuse line going through the tail red eye shad style bait really really good looking bait almost We've, like a clear sexy shad now this is interesting so we have from lnr custom baits Right, LNR Custom Baits. Look them up on Instagram, Naples underscore Custom Baits. There is a bag of plastics that have a bunch of different paddle tails in here. There's a huge natural green looking paddle tail. It's got to be like seven inches long. And then there's some other, you know, uh, looks like a silver back with a white belly, like a, a small, a, a smaller scale finesse shad paddle tail swim bait as well. Like a natural, natural shiner almost. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A, yeah, exactly, like a natural shiner. And this one, this one intrigues me. So this one, we've uh, there. There's been items uh, from Flip and Stick Bait Company before in some of the Dark Horse boxes, but this is all over the place. Like the shape is is great. I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna open these up. So, so I do have a few swim baits, but I think the biggest I have is like four inches. I, I use them basically as trailers. That's pretty much what I use for like a lot of the paddle tails um, with the underspins. But this is. Cr- Crazy looking. Look at that guy, huh? Yeah, this is this is a nice. Um, it's 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 set up so that it can really hide the hook. It's got those openings along the ba- the ba- the belly and the and the backside so that you can bury the hook and keep it from getting hung up. The paddle tail, the boot tail on this is unbelievable. This thing's gonna flump some water, but it also has this little like almost like a a sideways dorsal fin on there for yeah. a little bit more action. The these, little rudder, the little upper rudder on the paddle tail. A lot of bait, a lot of bait companies are doing that nowadays. Yeah. Um, I actually fielded a question about that yesterday. I'm not going to say from who or about what. Mm-hmm. But um my example for when I that I sent back in the messaging was um and this was the one I found the, the Berkeley Sickfish is like that. Where it oh, has yeah. That, <clears throat> it has that that uh 
you know, it almost has the upper, the upper part of the tail is realistic, and then the bottom part is a boot. Yep. Yep. And it gives just enough weight, you know, having it there, having it kick back and forth. And I don't know. I, and when I sent really that message good. back, I don't know if that's functional. Like, I don't know if it does something, if it acts like a rudder. I have no idea. I don't know if it affects the, the paddling at all or if it's just an aesthetic thing to make it look a little more realistic. So there's one other thing that I think is pretty cool in this um, in this box is that uh, our, 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 our homies for life. Home, uh, good friends of the show, uh, Hookshead Hoodlums. I don't know if you can see. They have a great looking business card in here. I sure can. They have. Uh, they they included one of their new stickers in here, which looks pretty badass. And it's nice. a nice. It's a nice compact size, so it's it's the type of sticker you could you know pop on you know your truck or you could put on a tackle box or like I've been doing lately is I've been I've been getting getting crazy with my coffee mug and my water bottles. Mm-hmm. You know, putting a lot of stickers on there and. Uh, I, I like to utilize stickers as conversation starters. So when I'm out, you know, doing whatever, when I and I have my mug, people see that, you know, that beer can hooks at hoodlums or chronic trips or something. They kind of have an idea of of the show, and you know, it's a, it's a good way to kind of start some conversation. So that's the dark horse tackle box for this month. We're going to give that sucker away in our in our February giveaway. That's going to be one of the included prizes. But I like, you know, I like doing the the surprise. That's what I said to. Uh, to Jason and Derek over at Dark Horse, I told him, I said, you know, guys, I was like, fishing for us is really slow right now. Uh, I go, I think, you know, during some of these months, what we're going to do is utilize these boxes pr- as giveaways whenever we can, you know, to kind of get out there. So you guys check that out. If you don't already subscribe to Dark Horse Tackle, you should. Uh, they're, a, a, they're a great company. They uh, they give you, um, the, you know, local, I, I don't really want to say, they, make, they give you domestic uh, baits. These are baits that people are making in their basements, in their garage is fishermen are making these baits you're not getting the big box store stuff that's out there so this is a really really great way to check it out check out dark horse tackle uh they've got great great stuff available i think this box is like i I think it's like about 25 bucks a month you get a a bunch of different baits to try out and it's great because you get to try stuff that you probably haven't ever seen before you know and and there's uh that's pretty it's, it's pretty cool it's a whole lot of fun there's uh i think stretching lines will be in um a dark horse box soon Good. I think so. Well, I think so. I had I had two ways to go off this conversation. Uh, why don't I break that big news right now? Let's do it. Let's talk about it. So, speaking of stretching lines, so um, we've we've talked enough on the show over the past few months that Damien and I have been in contact over a number of things. And uh, this past uh, weekend, he and I got together and hashed out a little bit of a an, uh, an agreement, a collaboration, if you will, a partnership between myself and and him. Yeah. Um, so I I'm going to be part of the stretching lines team. But not as a pro staff. We mm. kind of we kind of had some fun coming up with what my title and duties are. <laughs> so instead of being pro staff, um, because Damien is so close to my house, and there's um, there's a lot of input that he's allowing me to have on his lures. Yeah, we're we're just calling me a creative consultant. <laughs> I think how, cor- how corporate is that? It's so corporate. <laughs> are you wearing your khakis yeah. right now? No, I'm wearing fucking lobster slippers. Didn't you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> but you could wear those with pants, you know, these you are, could. these are my uniform of the day, lobster slippers. So, Fair enough. um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to really, uh, to really, I mean, how do I say this? Just being involved in what he's got going on. I mean, he's yeah. really, really, he's open creative about what he, yeah, he's well, number one, he's a great dude. Number yeah. two, as far as stretching lines itself goes, he's always posting videos of him pouring plastic. Dude loves to pour plastic. Yep. And this all came about because, uh, what was it about a month ago, maybe, maybe early December, I had contacted him and, and he had a new mold Yep. and it was something that I kind of fell in love with uh, for a number of reasons. And I had said, Hey man, can you customize some of these for me? I want to give him a, a roll. And dude, Damien just said, yes, what colors do you want? And then pretty much handed me a garbage bag of them and said, here, try these out. And I'm yeah. like, okay. And unfortunately I didn't get to try them out because the, the damn lake that I went to where I was planning on using these things was iced over. So um, that, that trial is going to wait till spring because there was, again, there was, I think this, this mold that he has now is going to do some serious. Damage. I agree with you. So, yeah. And you saw what I had, you yep. saw what he threw my way and I have a I bunch of them to do. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I think it's yes. going to be killer. So, um, when that happened, I, you know, I had said, well, you know me, I don't want to just get free shit. I'm like, well, how can I help you out? What can I do? I mean, obviously we talk about you on the show, but that's neither here nor there. I yeah. said, and he he kind of threw a few things at me, and I came back with some more things, and we just kind of hashed it out. And I mean, I'll be 
helping him out with everything from, you know, colors and recipes to mold suggestions to if he needs to get an order out quick and he's got to work or something, I'm 15 minutes down the road. If I need to pack plastics while he pours, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. That's- but um, yeah, I mean, bottom line, you've seen his work. Yep. I've seen his work. Uh, I've used a few of his things. You've used a few of his things. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think this is a, uh, I think Damien's got a really good thing going on. I'm, I'm glad he uh, he's okay with me being a part of it. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. So that's where we're at. That was announcement number one. Now, the second thing coming around here on this giveaway, you and I had talked over the past week about an item that you had received, and I'm not yes. going to tell the story, that may be part of a giveaway. Do we want to talk about that now, or is that going to sit you know on the back burner? Uh, you know, yeah, let, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Because okay. um, th- while there are some challenges that we're figuring out right here, we should definitely go and and give it a go. So one of the, one of the things that we're talking about here for this uh, upcoming giveaway, and, and we maybe we'll, it'll just be the one that we do in February, the end of this month. Um, cool. The, what, the thing that, that really has kind of blown us away is uh, the amount of different uh, platforms that people will listen to this podcast on. It's, it's pretty crazy. And, and I'll tell you, one of the things that I do, I listen back to our podcast sort of as like a quality control to make sure like everything kind of works. I have to you know go through the stages of editing and things. But as, as Sean has learned, I edit everything at like two times the speed. So I'm looking for things in waves and I'm figuring things out. And I get to listen to us like the chipmunks, basically. And usually that Tuesday morning after I see what the first few listens look like and everything, and I'm looking at analytics, I get up and I pour myself a nice hot black cup of coffee and I start making breakfast and I listen to the podcast in my kitchen on my Amazon Echo. Um, and it's it's the old school one. The old school, it looks like a big like can of oil, like it's huge. And yep. I'll tell you what, um, whether you love Amazon Echoes or not, you know, or smart speakers at all, this thing is a great sounding Bluetooth speaker. In fact, my kids each wanted one for their rooms just to use as a Bluetooth speaker. And, uh, and also, like, my oldest likes to make shopping lists and things like that. And it got me thinking. I was like, you know what? <sighs> This would make a great prize for a giveaway. So we, uh, my my wife actually had won uh, an Amazon Echo at uh, at work. Uh, it was some kind of a, a holiday work raffle or something, and and she had won one, and we have absolutely no need for it. So she donated it to the show, which I I mean I cannot believe. You want to talk about shocking? Like my wife thinking at like the show being like an actual thing that's like you know. I, I was very generous of her. I did not expect it, but thank you, Holly. So round of applause, round yes. of applause. So she gave me the echo. She was like, if you can use it for something, go for it. I was like, okay, cool. So we want to give away one of these Amazon echoes. And I found out that this one, this one model actually has a visual display on it. Um, so Ooh. you can use it as a clock as well. It's not a, a like a screen, like the, my, my, my folks, I think have a video one so they can make video calls and stuff from it, which means buckle up. Cause there's going to be a million calls coming that are like, can you guys see me? Is this, <laughs> I can't see you. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. But uh, so we have an Amazon Echo we want to give away. And what we've been kind of working on is trying to get the the show, and we've submitted everything for it, to be on Amazon Music. Uh, but this is a great way. You can connect your phone to it via Bluetooth and listen to the show. That's how I like to do it. I've been trying to get my Amazon to just play it by asking. Uh, I've been trying to get my Echo to play it just by asking, you know, and saying like, hey, Alexa, play Jigs and Bigs on Amazon Music or a- on Spotify. And it seems to always give me something messed up. So I don't know. We're working on trying to get that figured out on our end. Uh, But in the meantime, it's a great speaker. And this was the other thought that I had was especially like right now when people are getting their stuff together. Not only is an Amazon Echo a good thing to have in your, you know, like like your man cave or your tackle corner or whatever one, whatever you want to call it, where you're setting your stuff up. Maybe you're in a garage or a basement. Set that up and let it rip. Light up your candle from Summit View Sense, and then if you realize that you're running low on, I don't know, tube jigs, you can just say, "Hey Alexa, 
order more eighth ounce tube jigs from such and such company and they'll put it on your shopping list and then you can get the tackle that you need or just make make a list and then go off of it based on that instead of forgetting when you're online and saying like oh I need more drop shot weights I need more you know football head swinging football head jigs or I need more of whatever this way you kind of at least have it to go from you can access it right from your computer and look up your list and, and everything and figure it all out so we're going to give one of those away uh, this way you can listen to the show if you never want to connect the thing to the internet you could use the thing as a bluetooth speaker and have at it you know and it takes up no space at all it sounds really good too yeah now yeah. where i was going with this was yep you le- you learned something about alexa i did the other day. holy shit and, did i learn something yeah so when we had this conversation and you you had made mention that you have pretty much an echo in every room of your house or thereabouts right i mean you've got yes. yours your your both your daughters and your wife has one too right or she does not use one um, my wife, no, my, 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 well, we just use ours in the kitchen. Like, uh, okay. That's it, okay. Yeah. Okay. So when I had said, I immediately said, have you asked it to fart? And you said, what? I said, have you asked Alexa to fart? And you said, no. And you were shocked that I would even suggest this. And I said, well, when my kids go over to my parents' house, the first time I saw they had an echo, they ran into the house ahead of me, took their coats off, immediately went to the corner of the kitchen and started yelling at Alexa to fart. So if you ask Alexa to fart. <laughs> oh, good. Just go good. ahead. Go ahead. Keep talking. Do we? Did you happen to record the results, or should we just let the listeners do it on their own? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I did not record the results, but part of the reason why this tickled me so much is that I have a one-hour-long fart sound effect compilation that I like to play when I'm picking up the kids at school back when in-person school was a thing. So it was not weird for me to pull up at the elementary school picking up my children. They would open the door, and this was the soundtrack. Well, I'll, I'll just continue with the story then because Go ahead. When, I, when we discussed this and you said you had heard the story, the backstory, you immediately said, Alexa, fart. And Alexa responded, okay. That was a wet one. Yes. And you started laughing. And I then it, I believe asked, Alexa asked you if you wanted an elephant one next. <laughs> Would yes. you like an elephant fart? And you said, of course. By this time, you and I aren't having a conversation no. too far in. You're now having a conversation with Alexa about the farts. After the second or third one, Alexa then asked you very politely if you would like to spend 39 cents on the fart expansion pack, which your reply was a very annoyed yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which was the best part of that call? Uh, was, because how how dare you, Alexa? You know damn well I want the farts. Thirty nine cents ain't shit. Give me the farts. Damn boy, he fit. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody out there who's got an echo, go ahead and ask Alexa about farts. Or if you have kids, do it. I mean, it does. It gets old after about thirty minutes. <laughs> but it's fun. But it's funny. It's yeah, funny it's as good. hell. So compounding that. When I uh, I saw my uh, I saw my parents this weekend and I was telling them relaying the same story we just did here. Yep. And one of the things my kids and my kids found this at CVS and we were dying laughing um, because my dad enjoys the farts from Alexa just as much as I oh, think yeah. the kids do. We found this toy. It's a little ninja and it's called the Fart Ninja. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, <laughs> that was it's, the wrong time to sip some coffee. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so. So my kids are like, oh, we got to get this for, for you know, your, you know, for I, we have a nickname for my, my father. I'm not going to say it. It's just ridiculous. But uh, they said we got to get him for him for Christmas. So, I, so we picked it up and we put it. It's light sensitive. That's what triggers the thing. Oh, so wow. we had it. We had it in the uh, in the closet every time in the walk in closet. And every time we walked in and out of it, it, it every time we flicked the light on or off, you would hear. No, you would hear fart ninja. <laughs> I need this in my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my dad now has it. And he goes, every time I open the closet, the fart ninja gets me. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> you know, we were planning the <laughs> doing some production meeting stuff for the, the jigs and big shit show. And, you know, just to kind of get an idea of like where we were humor wise, Elise hits me with this question. She says, do you like farts? And I had to follow that up with Define like. 
Because <laughs> I think it's comedy gold. My wife thinks otherwise. Yes. I think it is comedy gold, and luckily she shares that same sentiment. So there will be Good. lots of fart sound effects. And yeah, I actually, there was one time I used the soundtrack of farts as a, a bed of music during trivia. And I, with a completely straight face, and it took every ounce of my willpower to not crack a smile. <laughs> I'm asking people questions about, you know, like world geography, and then in the background you hear, <laughs> and it, it took about 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 five minutes of that, and then somebody finally says to me, they're like, "Hey, Bobby, what's up with all the farts?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Like they were imagining it. <laughs> it was the best. I'm such a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. That's good. That's good humor. I'm down with it. I approve. Oh man, I I completely approve. I love it. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, moving on. Enough. Of moving the on. Enough. Moving on. Parts. I have I have a tip for everyone this week. Oh. Uh, you and I discussed there was yes. some gear some gear repair. Yep. This is so unglamorous, but I think it's a skill every outdoorsman should know. Actually, honestly, every human should know. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be the person. You know, the 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 cream of the crop on this one. But um, I spent uh, maybe about an hour, I think, last week. I was on the phone with you. We were discussing show stuff. Yep. And I seemed distracted. And you had mentioned it. And I said, yeah, it's because I'm sewing a button back on some pants. Yes. So everyone should really know how to sew. I mean, buttons fall off, like, <clears throat> for particularly us big guys. So it's difficult <laughs> to get clothes in the right sizes. For, for me, it's a complete and utter pain in the ass. What I found a few years ago um, on a clearance rack, I think at Cabela's down in Hartford, was... Uh, neoprene pants, not neoprene, neoprene, yeah, whatever they were, they're, they're really light, um, pants you can wear, you know, in, in when it's hot out in the summer, in the sun, your legs don't get burnt up. So in a kayak, that is incredibly important. It's, it's yeah, but they're light, right? They're real lightweight. Yeah. 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 Are they neoprene? No, no, they're not neoprene. They're fucking, uh, polyester. No, 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 no. Um, uh, they're like a really light Gore-Tex. Oh, not, what's Gore-Tex made out of? Fuck. I've only ever heard of Gore-Tex referred to as nylon, maybe? Yes, nylon. Thank you. I don't know okay. what's wrong with me this morning. It's, it's Monday. Fuck More it. coffee. That's Well, that's something else we could talk about, mm -hmm. but we'll get on that in a second. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, the nylon. I don't know. God. I got farts on the mind. So, <laughs> I was waiting for one. I was going to hit yeah, there. Oh. <laughs> she was a greasy one. Whatever, whatever came out of that was still moving. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a rough one. That was yeah, so, that was a rough one. So either way, I get these. Uh, I, I find these these pants that actually fit me at Cabela's. And um, here's a here's a good tip when you're buying pants if you're in a kayak and you want to do this, buy an uh, buy a pair of pants that are two inches too long. So oh yeah, if you're thirty six, buy a thirty eight length. Because um, <laughs> that's. But, I'm like a 28 length. I'm well, such a midget, man. <laughs> I'm 6'4", so I got it's a 36. True. Yeah, right, give it's me a break. true. Damn, dude. Uh, <laughs> well, go ahead, Bobby. Although, I, I will say this. The the um your, the um point, the reason why like you're making this is so that that way you're not exposing your ankles, right? When you're sitting yes, on your knees. Yes, when you sit down, it'll yep. still cover your ankles. Yep. That's, and just by the way, you know, I'm all about the thick. Yes, Sound effect, and you just missed a I, perfect I opportunity. Know. Too late, too late now. I, I mean, know. I'm not going to go oh, back. I'm not going to oh, go back. No, we, we yeah. can't go back. Yeah. So, anyways, getting back to this, uh, these pairs of pants. I got them. They're great. Oh my god, I got them. They're great, and uh, uh, the button fell off. So I spent whatever 20, 30 minutes stitching that back in there and making sure it was all good to go because. It's a, it's a good tip to know, and I mean, stitching a button on isn't like, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but it's something yeah. where it, it definitely, you know, do yourself a favor and you look up a YouTube video, like a how-to yes. or something like that. It's a great, it's something you'll be able to pick up quick, but trust me, knowing how to do it will save you a ton in the long run. Yep. You know? I took a, I took a sewing class in seventh grade. I don't remember 99% of what I yep. learned there, but... I learned how to just do a quick stitch fix for buttons. So when it came in handy when, um, and I, I mentioned this to you when I was doing it, came in handy when I was at basic training 22 years ago or 21 years ago, oh, whatever yeah. it was, because I hated shining boots. And at the time we had the boots that needed to be shined. So if somebody else was good at shining and could do it quickly, we bartered services. I was like, give me your whatever. I'll sew the buttons on. I'll do all your sewing. Make sure my boots are shining. That was services bartering. That's the way it works. Yeah. Know? 
Oh, Teamwork, absolutely. Baby. Did you ever, while somebody was shining boots after, you know, you were like sewing their buttons or something, did you ever pull the classic 90s comedy? Smell like shoe polish in here? I did. That yes. was, uh, uh, I did, but but not Good. everybody got it, man. It yeah. Was a, you know, it was a tough a room. Mix, a mixed crew. Well, you know, some people were exposed to that, some people weren't. It's true. It's true. You know? But the ones, you know, the ones that did get it were like, this guy's all right. <laughs> yeah yeah i love and on, on in the same uh in the same you know vein of comedy <clears throat> over the years as as we got older and um you know at some point somebody made a decision that i would have people i had to train i don't know who <laughs> i don't know who thought that was a good idea but you know i had airmen that i was in charge of and some days i would come in and my coffee be cold and i would just walk in and look at them all and go what do you mean there's no ice you mean i gotta drink this coffee hot <laughs> they would stare blankly at me and i would go oh my god you guys never saw clerks on i'm, I'm old yeah. the one guy that i worked with would laugh that was our age but ugh. Ooh, mini trucking magazine Ooh. hey you guys can ever carry hubcaps for a 79 pinto <laughs> <laughs> is there anything on sale <laughs> oh i love it <laughs> yep so i actually haven't had coffee um in a week and a half how are you doing uh physically actually a little better i think yeah. i think i had a lot of acid reflux you know based on the coffee so i've uh i just you know took it away and and i'm actually been surprised at how well i've you know i've been doing shall we say internally yeah um it sucks because i love coffee yeah but maybe one maybe one day i can kind of get it you know get everything inside of me steeled up or healed up or whatever and, yep. and try it again but for now i'm kind of rolling with it which you know, sucks i am uh i am very i consider myself to be very lucky as much as i love coffee and i freaking love coffee <laughs> i i you know i don't have those issues with like acid reflux or anything but i will say like as you get older you know i've i've i try to stay away from drinking coffee after a certain time and, and as the years kind of go by i bump that time lower and lower and lower not that it keeps me awake per se but you know it's you know i i just i've 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 also known figured out that drinking better coffee leads to uh less instances of stomach issues you know um which is great i i've, I've found found that to be the case for sure and you know it yeah. is what it well, is i had a, uh, I had an upper gi endoscopy Done yeah. a few years ago. Let me let me emphasize that upper, <laughs> not lower. All right. <laughs> so um, the upper was done, and I was coming out of the anesthesia, and the doctor had come in. I had asked a question, one particular question, um, with some of the other stuff I'm dealing with internally, and he he came back and said, "Yeah, that's." He he started going off on a tangent on GERD, on acid reflux. Yep. And I'm fucking wasted. All right. And this, you know, it's a, it's a recovery room or it's a recovery, um, recovery department. So there's what, like 15 beds. Yep. They're all separated. There's, there's walls and partitions and whatnot. <laughs> and he's hammering me on this acid reflux, hammering me. Now I've cut down on my soda beyond significantly. You know that, you yep. know, I mean, just, just from this summer to now. Oh yeah. Big difference. I'm a, I might have one a week now where I was like three or four a day. Yep. And, um, he, I'm coming out of the anesthesia. My wife's sitting next to me and he goes, uh, I said, he, he starts hammering me on the acid reflux. He's like, what are you drinking? I'm like, I drink Pepsi and I drink coffee. And he's like, you got to stop the coffee and you got to stop the Pepsi. Now I've mentioned on the show, I don't drink alcohol. I stopped yeah. 50. I'm on year 14 now of sobriety. Yeah. So I don't do that. Some of the stuff I, I am limited in what I can eat. So like my Pepsi and my coffee were kind of my little, you know, your little, uh, they were your treat. You know, yeah, that's, they that's were my treat. I, I did a lot of treats, right? Yeah. So he says, I, I finally got the answer out of him. And I said, look, what is wrong with, with problem A? And he goes, oh, that's actually fine. You've done a really good job with your diet and you've healed up on that. He goes, but you got to stop drinking the Pepsi. And as loud as I could, I just said one word. Fuck! <laughs> Every nurse jumped in that place. I mean, they see all sorts of shit when people coming out are coming out of anesthesia. Oh, of but, course. But I was, I just, he told me you got to stop drinking Pepsi. And you got to stop drinking Pepsi now. I just yelled it. I dropped the loudest f bomb I ever have. And uh, yeah, that was good. What I shook that room. <laughs> Louder than that. <laughs> that. That pales in comparison. So yeah, that was some fun stuff. So getting old is awesome. Yeah, um, it's fantastic. Anyone, who, anyone, anyone who tells you otherwise is full of shit. 
and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yep. Yeah, that that does suck, man. It's like, uh, you know, I you know, it's it's funny for a while. Like I was uh, alcohol was the worst as far as like acid reflux, and you know it was you know what I noticed it was it was when I scaled back on drinking uh, a lot of beer. Um, back when I was more of a beer guy, it was just oh man, it was just bad news. But you know, I was also believe it or not even heavier then. Yeah. So and I was enough, a, I was I was always a beer guy when I drank. So yeah, you know that was bad on a number of levels for me and and um. I mean, I'm not going to say I never drank hard liquor, but I yeah, primarily exactly. drank beer. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of funny. I, I feel like, I mean, I am definitely more of a brown liquor drinker than anything, you know, but I will slow down and have like over the course of a whole night, maybe a couple of scotches and, uh, you know, or bourbons or something and that's it, you know, and, and anything else is just, yeah, I just, I don't want to, I've, I've gotten to the point now where I don't want to ruin my stomach. I don't want to ruin my night's sleep. You know, it's like, it's just not worth it. You know, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we're, we're too old for this shit. Yeah, let's go fishing. Let's go freaking fishing, man. I got so the the amount of DMs that I have had in the last handful of weeks ha- has been amazing. With hey, is it spring yet? Come on, I'm so amped up for spring. Looking forward to it, and I'm just I'm 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 with you. I feel you guys, hundred <laughs> percent. Well, for those people that are ready to fish, whether it be hard water or open water, yep, the registration is open. For the Chronic Trips February Multi Species Elevated Fishing Tournament. So, yes, if you're a beginner looking to get into tournaments, you never fished a tournament before, get yourself a ruler with a vertical edge. <clears throat> Go on to Fish Donkey and you can download the app too. Search for Chronic and the February tournament's up there to register. Uh, there are two divisions. If you are not a sponsor or involved in the Chronic Trips um, organization, please do not jump on the uh, the Nature Nuts or Sp- Nature Nuts. I, I laugh every time I say I know. <laughs> uh, Nature Nuts or Sponsors Division. If you are coming out of the blue, ready to fish, you are a competitor. Yeah. Jump in that division, please. But again, um, try to have those rulers. Um, again, I'm not going to go nuts over measuring tape or whatever, but I'm, I'm giving everybody a heads up. Try to get one. You can buy one on Fish Donkey. You can start with a hog trough. If you're planning on fishing bass tournaments this year, whether it be MAKB mm-hmm. or one of the EKF regionals or a KBF event, because we got one coming to Connecticut, please get yourself a hog trough and not, don't don't bother with the other um, the other measuring devices because did I say hog trough? Please get yourself a catch board. Yeah, if you're going to go okay. for it, do it catch board for sure. Yep, and if if you if this is your first time and you're trying to figure it out and deciding what you want to do, go ahead buy the hog trough off of a off of fish donkey. But if you know that you're going forward. Yep. All those other uh, organizations require catch boards that's spelled K E T C H. Yep. So there you go. Yeah, and you'll thank yourself. I, I've been using the Carbonite board. It's I mm-hmm. think it's a thirty dollar board, and it is it's great. Like the numbers are super clear. You can see them easily. They're they're permanently on there. They're not going to come off. Um, there was there was uh, something I had posted late last night. It was after I had actually recorded the interview segment with Rachel. We started talking about um, about uh, some of her confidence baits, and, and uh, Ned Riggs came up, and mm-hmm. and you know that's one of my favorite presentations. One of my favorite pr- f- finesse presentations is Ned Rig, and one of the biggest issues that I've always had with them is I'm always trying to rig them a little bit more weedless. That open hook is just not necessarily my favorite. I actually I had a conversation in uh, uh, an interview that you'll hear coming up with uh, the Slaunch uh, with Slaunch Doctor. Um, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, I often will fish the TCR as an alternative to the Ned so that I can be a little bit more carefree about putting it into heavier cover, you know, yep. and, and not worrying about getting it hung up. So I, I had this conversation with Rachel and, and we were talking about, I asked her, I said, what was your favorite Ned head? And she had mentioned she really likes the, it's by owner. It's called the Blockhead Offset Ned Rig. And that's what it is. It's an EWG style Ned and it's lead. Unfortunately, yeah. it's lead. So I, I explained, you know, we had a little <clears throat> conversation about that. And I was like, oh, you know, I got to really look into this. And I've, I've talked to um, the folks over at Reaction about it. They just haven't released a, an EWG net or anything yet. But I, I, it, it's time. I really want to play around with these. And I don't want to have to make the um, the jump to uh, 
to doing, you know, to using lead. <laughs> like I really do try to follow the rules and, and be lead free, you know, where it counts. And, and that is one spot where it counts. So what I did was I posted something on our Instagram story asking for folks to recommend a lead free EWG style Ned rig. And, uh, <laughs> It was actually, it was, you'll hear from, from Joseph Martin later in this episode, but he comments, he says, none of them pitch a flip a jig instead. (laughs) And, you know, I can't really disagree with that. Uh, There are some times though, where I feel like even the, the, the skirt is, is a little bit too bulky, like, you know, sizing down even from that and, and, and and reducing the size of the presentation. I totally get that because I'll throw some small finesse jigs, no worries. And, and, but there are times where a Ned will just get bit where that finesse jig might not necessarily do it. Um, and then I had uh, uh, Adam Laxton, Western Mass, uh, Western dot Mass dot Bass, said lifted jigs. I'm pretty sure is tungsten. They're not uh, tungsten. No, they no, are they're not, not tungsten. Adam. I was curious if maybe they had put out a line that was tungsten, but I looked into it. They are not tungsten. And then uh, Hooked on Fish and Thirteen had commented and said, "Woo." And I just looked at Woo, and actually Woo was one of the first things that I had considered. But they don't offer an EWG uh, Ned style. But all is not lost. And during during our interview mm-hmm. uh, with with Wu, yep, um, I believe didn't they say they were on tap? They were working through designs I, on that. And so it's I think that's what it is. I think a lot yeah. of these companies are, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I did find a tungsten company that uh, makes them. Before you get into it, okay, I'm wondering is it the same one that I use? Because I know of one, I have to order them. Um, I order them in bulk. They are really expensive. These are and, dirt cheap. Yeah, these are really the ones I use are extremely expensive. Yeah, and you've seen. I, I actually, I haven't had it happen recently, but there, I was having a, a couple of issues with the head itself. Yeah, um, actually, this is. I can't even believe I'm saying this. Actually, splitting in half and falling off. So I've left with a funky shaped hook. But um, oh, I'll really? go ahead. I'll go ahead and say it. I, I, I'll go ahead and say it because I use them. Um. And then we can talk about yours, but the the ones I use are made by Harmony Tackle. Oh, those are the ones. Yeah, those are yours. Yeah. Oh, so I've been using Harmony, but I, it, dude, they are so expensive. Really, I yeah. found them for on Amazon a five pack for like nine forty nine. That's expensive, dude. That's two dollars a head. Yeah, but it's tungsten, <laughs> like that. I that I I get. It's, yeah, but I can get a full jig for two dollars a head for a tungsten jig. You know what I mean? So you're getting a much smaller. I can get a. I can get a big full like those. Uh, you know the ones we. Uh, the ones we can purchase from um, lead free bass jigs. Yeah. Uh, yep. Quarter ounce, three eighth. Those are about two bucks a head. Yep. Yeah. And they're much bigger for, for those. No, that makes sense. Although I will say they do. They do come with a bait keeper. Um, that, you know, so, I mean, I don't know if that increases the value per se or yeah. anything like that. I, I've you're used, talking about the, those little, those little rubber. Yep. Those little rubber like yeah, rings. I don't even use them. Yeah. I, you know, I don't either. In fact, I actually, it's funny because I do have some three eighths football head, uh, tungsten jigs from them, the swinging football head ones. Yep. And, and I was looking at those and I'm just like, really? I'm like on an EWG hook. That's really a, a thing. But um, I suppose, you know, I'll usually, on, honestly, I'll usually just take a dab of, uh, of uh, take a dab. <laughs> I'll usually just take a dab of like super glue or something and, and glue that right up on the, on the shank of the hook and it will hold, you know, um, up in that spot. But I mean, I've never had an issue with with their stuff. My my biggest concern with Harmony is the hooks. I'm not 100% sure what uh, hooks they are using. Um, they seem to be, you know, with a Ned, I feel like more of a finesse hook is okay. You know what I'm saying? Because you need, you want that fine wire. You want to be able to penetrate relatively easily. Um, you know, I, I get that. Uh, I, I'm just more concerned about like the eye of the hook. Uh, but with these these Ned heads, it doesn't seem to be much of an issue. But that's interesting. Okay, so I did find them, and I was like, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, two dollars two dollars a jig is is you know for for a Ned, you know what what was, for an eighth ounce? Yeah, that's that's not. So I'll tell not I'll cheap, tell you this. But it is tungsten. It's that's what you'll pay. Yeah. If you've seen me, if you've seen me throwing a Ned rig over the past two years, mm-hmm. I haven't used any other Ned hooks at all. Any other ones? I haven't used any other ones other than those harmonies, huh? That's it. No kidding. Yeah, well, that's good to know. I, I have, I've played around with them. You know, I found them. I was like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. I'll, I'll get some. So I bought two packs. 
Um, I, they should be here relatively soon. I did find like some of the weedless options that are there where they have like either a wire um, on either side of that hook point that will kind of move out like a V. Those work okay. Um, in certain certain areas, like if I'm in the kayak, I have no problem throwing an open hook uh, net rig. But if I'm on the bank, I will always rig a TCR with a little one aught EWG and a tiny eighth ounce or, or even smaller tungsten bullet weight. And I'll, I'll use that. And, and while it isn't the ideal presentation, like it won't stand up per se, like if you're throwing like a, a, um, a, a Z man bait, like a, a, like a TRD that floats, it'll, it'll, will definitely do what you need it to do. But I, I've always just wanted to play with the EWG, uh, style net heads to see if it would, um, if I would have a better time with it, and it would, I would have that better like head to, to stand up on the uh, the harmony ones. Are they they're round, aren't they? They're ball shaped heads, aren't they? They are ball shaped. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the thing that drives me nuts. You remember we were doing our testament over the uh, the lead free bass jigs, and yep. particularly our kits, because I've literally thrown those things off bridges. I've thrown them off everything. Well, yeah. the harmony ones cannot survive that. Yeah, that's where they've been splitting. They are a lot. I don't know. Like uh, I saw it happen well, enough. It's not once or twice. I've seen this happen enough where that, that head splits off of it. Anybody from Harmony's listening, feel free to call in. I, I'm not knocking your product. I'm just saying I something they should know about. Maybe. Yeah. I'm rough yeah. with your shit and it's not surviving it um, all the time. Go for a sound effect. What was that? <laughs> you start, when you, you lean said- forward and you start laughing, I expect a sound effect. <laughs> you just said I'm rough on your shit. <laughs> Well, I am. So yeah, the, those harmonies are all I've used for the past two years. Yeah, I, it's definitely something I think I, I'm. I'm interested to look around. Um, you know, I know, I know there. It's it's on the radar for a lot of people because let's be honest, it's it's a fantastic way to to use that presentation and and have the have it be, you know, a little less of a, of a risk getting hung up on anything. You know, if, if you have the ability, like I've, I've hung up plenty of Ned rigs here and there, and it's just frustrating because you got to try and get unhook and uh, get it unhooked, free it up and pop it back. Um, there, I've heard some people say before that they try to avoid using that, that the EWG can cause a, uh, a, uh, more difficulty as far as a hookup ratio. Um, you know, <laughs> No, but I've no. never like I've never I, I use offset worm hooks all the time in similar situations. I've never, ever had an issue uh, where I've I've missed fish with them. But, you know, I'm, I'm not not to discredit anybody, but, you know, that's kind of like that's just been my experience. But um, it, it's interesting that Harmony is that one. I thought I found something that was like totally brand new. I thought you were buying like a store brand or something like that. No, I was using those Eagle Claw ones that you yep. can buy at uh, at Richard's Sporting Goods. Yep. And uh, those 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 yeah yeah those tin ones they were all right, but they're it's a standard Ned head. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you're gonna if you're if you're trying to fish a Ned rig in weeds, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that EWG that's what hook I, helps. I needed something for it, and then when I started having success combined with a couple other little tweaks I was making um, in my plastic selection, I mean those those hooks complemented what I was doing perfectly. Yeah. So I can't sit here and say, yeah, every fish I caught in the past two years on a Ned rig has been solely because of those. Um, no, it's an extra wide gap. That's we, that's a, uh, that's lead free that I can use in Massachusetts. Yeah. It's the end, the end of the means of getting, de- getting the things that I need to get into the weeds and out of the weeds yep. easily. So yeah, go for it. Buy them. I actually keep a couple different sizes too, because I found that, if a Ned rig, uh, if they're if they're going to take a Ned rig, I might try upsizing just to see if something will bite big, you know, something something bigger. larger will bite exactly. Yep. And they so do. I'll, they I'll, have a I'll throw, version too. Yeah, I'll throw creature. I'll throw creature baits with those yep. two bigger ones, and mm-hmm. uh, it works fine. I'm sure. I don't throw a lot of shaky heads, but I'm sure that would work too. Yep. And that's um, it's interesting that you say that because that was another one of my alternatives for using for Neds was to throw like I love the reaction tackle shaky heads. I'll throw those in like a quarter ounce or or even a three eighths, a larger one. And yeah, you're right. You know, you size up a little bit. I'll use, you know, like you know what I like throwing on those? The freaking four inch uh wild worms from Hookshead Hoodlums. Yeah, there you go. That's like that is, is a slightly upsized Ned rig. Yeah. I use four inches all the time. Yeah. So, um, well, I mean, really, when you think about it or what, getting back to what you were saying about the hooks, I've never had a problem with their hooks. It's always that fucking ball head that breaks. That's good to know. If, if something happens, it's always the ball. Yep. It's never the hook. Uh, I mean, look, you, you're going to bend them when you snag them in trees and shit, but sure. I, you know, I've never had a problem where uh, a fish has hit one 
and I've come back with a hook straightened out. I've never had that yeah. happen. It's been extreme pressure where I've, you know, one of the few occasions where I was throwing it with, um, with braid. Yep. You know, you go ahead and, you know, I don't care if it's eight or 10 pound braid. You go, you set a hook on that hard yep. and it's a tree. You're going to straighten a hook out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's a light wire hook. It's a Ned rig. I think, uh, part of the, um, the cost with those harmony Neds being, you know, uh, just under two bucks a pop, uh, I think it has to do with the fact that they're tungsten because if I'm, 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 maybe I'm, I'm, I'm mistaking the, the material that lead free bass jigs is using, but they're not tungsten there. I think they're bismuth. Yeah. It might the, be, the it, lead free. Yeah, it might, it might be, but yeah. I just, I mean, really looking at it when I look at $2 a jig head, I don't care yeah. what it's made out of. Um, um, that's raising a flag for me, but I use them. Like mm-hmm. I said, the only issue I've had with them is the head splitting. And that's which- what that's what blows my mind. I mean, I, I I looked around all over the place, and I did. I looked into Woo, and I was like, oh, maybe they've got that out now. You know, we'll check it out. And I just looked now, and it's it's not available. And, you know, I mean, I, if Harmony's doing it, they can kind of set their price. You know, I well, mean, it's because I think market market um, demand and and uh, you know availability and supply kind of comes into play there. You know, where they're like, hey, you know, these nobody else is doing this. You know, so reaction, yeah, it, woo, you guys. One get thing, on it. one thing we should mention is, um, or I should mention, the the sizes that I use are not what you would consider standard Ned heads. Yeah, for, I'm a little for, bit more for weights traditional. Well, yeah, because I don't, I don't use like a sixteenth or a fifteenth or a, or a, a tenth. Yeah, you know, I've seen all sorts of fractions of weights. I stick with uh, an eighth and a quarter. And okay, it. maybe maybe you and I are are a little bit more aligned, because yeah. I will I will stick to an eighth, and then I'll I'll generally like I'll, I'll throw a sixteenth if it's like super finessey. You know, um, if if I really, really, really need to to scale down, but I'm generally throwing an eighth, and if I'm going to throw a quarter, it'll be a TCR. Yeah, uh, I yeah, I, just, I mean, just I because it, I've got I, so much tungsten in a quarter ounce. Well, I use that quarter for bigger baits. Yeah, that too. Uh, what, what what I'm doing is, and and this is you can testify to this. Remember testify. we had that talk. Testify. Woo. We uh remember we had that talk about how many fish do I think actually hit on the drop, and you were going one lean in one way with it. And I said, yep. dude, I honestly, I cannot think of the last time that I actually had to jig something along the bottom. Mm-hmm. I think 99% of my fish remember how many times did I call you and say, Hey, it happened where I actually bounced it on the bottom this year twice. Yeah. I've caught hundreds plural of fish using those, those, uh, harmony, um, heads, yep. and various Ned rigs, whether it's a worm or a creature or whatever. And I seriously think I called you two or three times about it. I was actually marking that in my log just because you had asked about it. Mm-hmm. And I, I, so less than 1% of the fish I catch are on the bouncing. Almost everything hits that Ned rig for me on the drop. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have to worry about the ball head. That was actually one of my concerns um, because it was that it wasn't going to stand up straight because yeah. of the ball head. And then that concern is absolutely gone because yeah. most of my hits are on the fall. I would, overwhelming majority of my yeah. hits are on the fall. Well, and you know, I mean, I tell people, don't be afraid of that round head. Don't. And and here's the reason why. It, look at, well, I'll at least look at like the, the finesse jigs that I throw. Uh, the, some of the best ones that I throw have a round head. And, yeah. you know, they the the plastic, it's, it's all about where that hook point is tied on and what you're pulling because it does move it up. You know, when you're actually bouncing it, it's just as it's lying there, it's it's uh, it's going to roll over off to its side. But in, in reality, you know, and if, if you've done any any searching on like video for underwater footage, you can see that that happens. Uh, people love to test net heads and pools and stuff. And, and you can see that like, you know, it's kind of has to be a perfect storm of of elements coming together where that Ned's going to stand perfectly straight up. Even your your shaky heads are going to wobble over to the side. You know, it's it's like it's more when you're when you're dragging it along the bottom. That's when I find that that it has more to do with where the 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 tie is for the hook and the way that it's getting pulled along. It'll kind of stand up that way. Yep. You know. Yep, so there you go. You uncovered one of my little secrets. Yeah, no shit. I, I thought there were other companies out there, though. I guess I was wrong. I yeah, just, I've I, been buying those because they were easy and they were on Amazon. And let me tell you, with with ten dollars a pack, and they were they were ten to eleven dollars a pack during the, the great tackle shortage of twenty twenty. Yeah, there was more than one fifty dollar order I put in this year. Yeah, more than one. That makes sense. I, I figured I would try them just to see. 
yeah. and you know we'll, we'll kind of we'll, we'll play play along and see see how how it plays out. I mean, I am that's one thing that I have been reevaluating is my terminal tackle box this year. I've been going through it and with a fine tooth comb and, and trying to get more organized as far as you know. I I would the bad habit of like oh EWG hooks all sizes go in one container. <laughs> Yeah, they don't want to do that. No, oh my god, the mess you have to clean up afterwards is terrible. Or if you're if you're looking for not even a specific size, but you're like, no, this is too small. No, I got to dig around in this. It just it's a waste of time. You know, it's it's better to just kind of streamline it all. And, and what I've done over the past couple of years is uh, all my all my hooks and my jig heads. Yep. Um, I found prevents rust a little better than just throwing them into a tackle box or throwing them into a film canister. Is uh-huh. uh, you can go to Walmart and I think they cost like a dollar ninety nine or a dollar fifty or something. Yeah, and you can get a hundred small bags. Now these bags, if you looked at them, would probably be used for illicit purposes back in the day. Funny you say that, but they're perfect. <laughs> yeah, um, I ordered I, like um, uh, pretty much all my tungsten except for those EWG heads comes from Reaction Tackle, and yep, cool. I, I I love it. Their packaging, like their drop shot. Uh, weights and there what else what else comes packaged this way the 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 ned rigs the yeah yeah the ned heads too that i had ordered they come in a a a plastic bag uh which has their their uh cardboard packaging you know stapled to it you open that up and then inside they bag them all individually and i started actually saving those bags oh nice so that that way i could like keep things you know organized or like store them long term you know yep uh, just, you know, you're right. It, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a good idea. And I'll, I'll say this too, just so like to really put the exclamation point on these heads yep. and how much I use them and how much I have faith in them, even with the stupid break thing, but you just have to buy more. I mean, this is, yeah. this is the game you want to, you want to play the game with this product. Um, that tournament I won on Nashua river, I caught every fish on a Ned rig with those heads. Yeah. That's but awesome. The cri- we got to keep in mind, like, so if you go out and buy these things, number one, they're expensive. And honestly, I buy them because of the law in Massachusetts. That's exactly it. If we didn't have the law, I would find a cheaper, more, you know, possibly as effective. It's it's a delivery method. Yes. It's getting the lure down to the fish without getting snagged. Yep. And every one of those fish that I caught in that tournament was on a Ned rigged creature bait on these heads on the on the eighth ounce, and I killed it. But it's an end to a means. Yeah. Um so there you go. I'm glad you uncovered that. I, we got real deep into. I didn't think we were going to get real deep into my personal. I, I actually tackle use. I thought I had some. I was bringing something to the table that was brand new. Like I knew that you had used some type of an EWG Ned, but I was like, is it is it maybe a custom or something? Like he's he somebody's pouring these or, you know, what is it that he's using? And and you know, honestly, Harmony's come up a number of times. I've even gotten Harmony stuff like. Just their EWG hooks, you know, or worm hooks. I've gotten them in, you know, mystery tackle boxes and things like that. Yep. I've seen them before, so it's not like they're completely unknown. But it's one of those companies where, like, you know, even you just look at your packaging, you're like, is this stuff like legit? Is it decent stuff? And I've never had an issue so far. Um, yeah, I think I've used their hooks before, and like I said, I, I've got some of their um, their uh, swinging football head jigs. Uh, yep. which those I'm really looking forward to, especially throwing some of those uh, creature baits from Stretching Lines. I think yes. those are going to be really, really great. Those actually might come in very handy for bed fishing, I think. They might be awesome. Hmm. You know, um, just having that, like, freedom of the head being able to move and the hook having, you know, whatever, even, even some paddle tails might be great on it. But I'm, I'm going on a tangent. No, it's all good, man. Yeah, I love it. So, so those, uh, I was using similar... Um, football head jigs like that with a swinging EWG yep. uh, in 2019. I used them pretty exclusively, did really, really well with them again with bigger creature baits. And then what I learned again, always going back to Oklahoma with jigs, what I learned was um, even having a jig like that, where it's connected, the hook is connected to the molded head uh, and swinging it, it decreases the sensitivity just a hair. So I like having yeah. the mold right onto the hook, and that's what I use the uh, quarter ounces for. And honestly, you know, if if it comes to a time, like I'll throw a jig, you know, a jig with a skirt. Yep. And then I find at certain points of the year, a you know, a slimmer profile is better, and they don't want the skirt on there. Mm-hmm. And I've just, I again, I try to limit everything. Now, if I'm finding that substitute of the Harmony one uh, one quarters are doing the trick then I'll just keep ordering all the harmonies. And then yeah. I've kind of not ordered as many um, 
of the swinging football head style, but I'm using them in completely, again, like you just said, don't get wrapped around the ball. Like when, when you read on fishing websites or you hear somebody talk about a certain thing, yep. um, think outside the box. Don't get restricted by what, even sometimes I do it too. Like, Hey, you should be using this for this, use this for this. There's situations that, you know, you don't have to, to, to go by the outline on. So like a swinging football head that's literally designed for rocks, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, I caught some fish off rocks on it. I'm not going to say I didn't. Sure. But use, using that uh, swinging football head jig and a creature bait was how I won like whatever it was. Remember, I always say I had those, those two weeks in 2019 where I mopped up every 20 inch yeah. fish in the yeah, pressures. Yeah. Yep. That's all I was throwing was a, a creature bait on a swinging football head jig. Yeah. And it was in weeds. Because I had to go weedless. I just one day I said, yeah. well, I'm going to try this because it's weedless and it'll do what I want it to do. Yeah, exactly. Fish, and it's, fish don't- it's, it's a compact enough profile and you're not going to be grabbing all kinds of salad while you're down there. It's, yeah, well, I was throwing in some heavy shit. I was grabbing all the heavy, but it was if you threw it with an open hook or a jig, it was. You know, oh, yeah. You were just trash. asking for it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It slid through that stuff a little better, but the fish don't give a rat's ass about a football head versus a you know, an archie style. They don't care. No, I got it's true. It, it, it's, a, it's a method of delivery that worked for me. And, you know, if it works in, in weeds as well as what it's designed for, why am I going to go ahead and buy another jig head? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it, exactly just, it. So, yeah, there you go. Wow, we got in some jig theory. I didn't. No, I wasn't I, expecting that. I love it, man. I love, I love the direction that these shows kind of go in. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, I would like a hippopotamus fart. <laughs> there was a hippopotamus <laughs> fart. There was would a- you <laughs> would you like a wet fart? Uh, sure, why not? Please. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. That's rough. How many people are going to hate us? Oh, everybody. What their kids everybody. are going to do. Yeah. Hey, that's exactly what it is. It's not it's not it's not the juvenile adults. It's going to be the kids. They're going to be like, "Oh my god, this is awesome." And it yeah. is. It's the cheapest upgrade. The Extreme Farts upgrade package. It's <laughs> And I think it's called the Extreme Farts upgrade. I think that's what they called it. It's kind of maybe, amazing. Maybe maybe we have to do is uh I know you're you're big on the updating the Amazon uh list that we have that of products we talk about. Yep. I think three products need to go up there today. Number 1, the Harmony uh, quarter ounce jigs, uh, the quarter ounce extra wide gap Ned heads or whatever yep. they want to call them. The one eighth of the same. Yep. And the Alexa 39 cent explosive fart <laughs> add on pack. It's a great idea. <laughs> I need to go and do that. I need yeah. to go and do that. I'm, now I'm going to get on you about it. You're going to get texts about it this afternoon. Hey, did you, did you add that shit? Did you add the shit to the list? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness. So um, you got to meet the uh, angling duo. I only met Justin. Oh, you only met Justin. Were yeah. They- oh, yeah. I, we could talk about that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, real quick, um, obviously, with the giveaways we've had, we uh, I, I also had a delivery to make to um, Old Glory. Yep. And it just so happened that the uh, the two of the – which were they? It was our last – it was the, the Holiday Hangover holiday Giveaway. Holiday Hangover Giveaway, yep. yep. Uh, so the, the angling duo and, um, and uh, Gravy Fishing, Eric Graves. That's right. Uh, are, we're in the vicinity of Old Glory, and I was able to set up uh, pickup times with them. And uh, Angling Duo actually had to stop in for shiners, which, man, if you're in the central mass area and you need shiners, stop in Old Glory. Uh, I mean, Joe's a machine. They, they are just a shiner selling machine. Mm-hmm. If they're even looking like they're they're, I mean, they don't run out. They're, 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 there's an endless well of shiners at his place. So stop in there because it was it was a. It was nonstop. I mean, obviously, we were socially distant. Everyone, you know, we were wearing all masks and everything. Yep. But, um, I had to, uh, I had to bring those. I had to bring three things. Like I said, the drop off for Old Glory. Uh, Joe had requested some, I guess, some prototypes or something from Stretching Line. So yep. he got a little, he got a little, you know, gift bag. And um, then I had the two prize winner stuff. So I met Eric. He's a great guy. I, I'm looking forward to him uh, fishing with him this spring. He said yep. he, uh, he and I have a particular lake. Uh, in Central Mass that we're going to go take a shot at so he can get some uh, some jig experience. So I'm looking forward to that. We actually even kind of set a week on it because I said, look, April's a mess. We've got three tournaments um, in the first three weeks for MAKB. And I said, I, I've got a – if you want to fish, I said, we can fish this one because it'll work out in one way or another. And yep. he said, yeah, so we're going to we're gonna figure that out. Um, and, yeah, Justin stopped in from Angling Duo and 
uh, they both, both of them put up Instagram posts, both, uh, angling duo and uh, gravy fishing. So check those out of all the stuff they won. Yep. And uh, yeah. And, and Joe at old glory has got a handful of swim baits to screw around with some prototypes. So it was, yeah, it was a good time. It was an amazing weekend, like yeah. an amazing, actually, even, even to go for, even before that all started, you got to experience something this week that, that uh, you hadn't experienced yet before. Um, you've experienced my trivia nights, but never a Friday night uh, at, at Casa de Lisa. Oh Which, man. <laughs> yeah. That was a blast. And you got to experience so many little nuances that make that place so unique. Um first off, I, I, I need to get your your opinion. What did you think of that uh that flatbread? That that uh that it was that, good. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I followed your recommendation and got yeah. the uh got the uh the vegetable one. That was really good. And my son loved it so much. So I, my son's at that age, you know, the the teenage years where I it's I'm always trying to find stuff to do with him. Yep, definitely. And uh you know, it's one thing to take him to his sports games and stuff, but he doesn't fish. Uh, the youngest one will come fishing with me. The oldest one won't. So I'm always trying to find stuff. And he's a gamer. So I always, you know, try to sit down with him for gaming or this, gaming yeah. that. And I said, I said, hey, would you like to come with me to trivia? And you can, um, you know, you can grab a pizza and it'll be all good. And he loved that pizza. So he's coming back That's with awesome. me, which is a home good. run. Nice. But he helped me out. Now, as you know, you know, with with the way you run trivia, um, if you're if you're at a table with three people. Yeah. And you got the right answer. You can tell your teammates or your people. Your people you're sitting at the table. It's not a big. It's not cheating. Oh, for cheating sure. would be having a laptop open or something on another. You know, another network trying to get answers. Exactly. So, um, my son actually had a couple of answers that were dead on. One of them, unfortunately, I had already entered my answer. He wasn't paying attention, and it wasn't one that you could enter a second answer. So he said, "He goes, hey, Dad, it's that." And I looked at him and I looked at my answer and I said, "Shit, you couldn't. You, you couldn't have said that five seconds earlier." <laughs> No more, no more pizza. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but no, he helped me out. He got a, uh, there was a question on video gaming, um, a video game company that produced some computers. He got that right. And uh, he got that. It was the other one was a, the one that he answered late was the uh, Terminator question. Oh yeah. So that he knows the Terminator the pretty T8, well. And he got that. Yeah. The T-800. And he got me, a, he actually got me a, a rap question. I didn't know. So that was good. A nice. question about a rapper. So that was a home run, but. Um, That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. There My, was, you know. My big question is this. So you got to now I I mentioned this only because it's become such a staple at my Friday night trivia nights. Um you got to witness Michael working yes. behind the bar. <laughs> I got to tell you something about this guy. I love him. He's he's great. He's uh he's a he's an accountant actually. And he works uh that shift as a way to save money because he can kind of mingle and have conversations with the people who are there. It's kind of like going out even though he's working, but he's not oh, he fucking mingled he's not buying right. drinks. Oh, he does plenty of mingling. But <laughs> he at least once a night, at least once a night. And I'll say I've seen it up to four different times in a 2-hour window while I'm there hosting trivia. He will trip over nothing. Yes. Like he'll be walking along and just trip. And, you know, he's not a big guy. He's a, he's a little guy. But this one, <laughs> first one he did, it, the team Joe Mama, Joe and Tasha were sitting across the bar. And every time he does it, they go and they, they try to make eye contact with me. Like, did you see it? Oh, my God. <laughs> you got to Dude, see it firsthand. At this point, if they're seeing it all the time, they should just hold up like a, a number sign. Like you're, you know, <laughs> judging, ju- judging figure skating. <laughs> yes. So. So speaking of skating, I know you're not a sports guy, but back in in the '90s when ESPN Sports Center was just the hottest thing, the you shit. had to watch Sports yeah. Center. Yeah. All right, you had to watch the morning, and then you watch the six or seven o'clock one, right? So, Chris Berman used to say, if there was a, a guy going down the ice playing hockey, and for n- absolutely no reason he would trip and fall, it would happen every now and again. Oh People, yeah. You know, it's, you're skating. You know, yep. going a million miles an hour, and he goes, hey, and so and so has got the puck. Oh, tripped over the invisible ice gopher. <laughs> So that was always fun. Uh, Ice Gophers got that one. <laughs> so that was a staple in the nineties. That's awesome. Yeah. So apparently, apparently, Casa de Lisa is overrun with invisible ice gophers. <laughs> it really is. My goodness, it's amazing. The first time I saw it, I was like, no. And I've never seen him do it like carrying food to the table. Although well, he doesn't, good. he doesn't do that very often because oftentimes what they'll do is the other uh, servers that are working the other side of the restaurant will just take the orders as they come out and then bring them over to the tables. Yep. Thank goodness. But like I've never seen him do it with drinks or anything like that. But for some reason, yeah, he just he goes and he's got some style when he does it. Like he trips over and you're just like, holy crap, dude. I heard it. I heard it before. Uh, I heard it behind me. It was yeah. behind me because I sat at the table where you were running everything. 
and I heard this thump, 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 and you just like giggled. <laughs> like, what the hell was that? It's yeah, amazing. good times. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. So I have something to do with my son now. So he likes that food. So we'll probably be yeah. stopping back in. You know, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a good place. We have a lot of fun. I know I know what someday this is going to happen. And Wild Bill has mentioned it before, but he goes, you know, one of these days we're all just going to go and make a, a, a pilgrimage up to uh, one of your trivia night, trivia nights and, and bust your balls. I hope that it's one of them that you're at. I think it'll be a whole lot of fun. It'll be yep. great. It'll be. And really I have great. to. I have to thank you too for making the uh, the duck quesadilla song. My buzzer noise. Oh, dude, that seems to get a so few giggles. Good. Yeah, <laughs> so good. And I've see the thing is the Friday nights is that I, at that point I've kind of like gone through the motions of hosting all the games and and you know while every day the questions that I'm going through are brand new. Like I've kind of at that point, you can tell it's Friday, and I'm a little bit punchier with the jokes here and there, yeah. and and it's uh, it's a little bit of a different show on Friday than if you catch me on Tuesday or Wednesday. Thursday, I kind of like getting into that spot, but yeah, that Friday night show is just like unbelievable. Well, good. Oh. Let, let's let's issue the open challenge to the Jigs and Bigs family. Yeah, Bobby posts his his schedule on Instagram and on Facebook. Yep, it's the same thing every week. I go to either Tuesday or Fridays, depending on the week. Uh, yep. Friday looks like for the foreseeable future might be some Fridays. Yeah. See you guys there. It'll be Pull good. your socks up. Pull your socks up. <laughs> and I do on occasion throw in a fish question too, yes. which I like. I, I like that a lot. And I, I you know, it's always and good. The, the tragedy of this week for me was I missed a comic book question. Oh, yes. And I, and I, had, to, I had to take a second guess at a Godzilla question, which yep. is just that's just tragic. Yeah, that was a tough Godzilla question too. Because no, you know, it like, was not. I you you know what it was? I hit the answer so quickly. Oh. I had time to think about it, and I started doing math in my in my head, and I'm like, wait a minute. And then I put the second one because that was the first round, so you can take two. Yep, ch- you can two take shots a guess. And an answer. Yep. Oh my god! And I, you said the answer. I'm like, why did I second guess myself? So basically, what I did was I cut five points or whatever it was off my score. Yeah. So yeah, that was stupid. That's so. It's, <sighs> it's so good though. Oh yep. man, do we have anything else we want to go over? I think uh, I think I'm I'm good as far as things that we wanted to kind of cover. I should mention that uh, the next episode of Jigs and Bigs, we're going to be recording all of this stuff um, on location, but I'm not going to tell you what that location yep. is because there's a yep. big ass announcement coming with it. So, and I may possibly in, uh, be in some state of undress when we're recording. We know this. There's there's a teaser, and then on top of that, damn on top- boy, he fit. <laughs> on top of that, we have a chance, an opportunity to wash the day down with duck quesadillas. It's true. It's, it I'm, I'm looking forward true. to that. Yeah. Oh, I can't yep. wait for, you know, and, and it's it's so funny. Just this week, I've had multiple conversations with people about how I can't wait for like life to get back to normal for events and things. I was tell I was telling my wife. I said, you know, I'd love to organize a a jigs and bigs event, like a game dinner or something like that, and just have listeners because uh, like listeners and the friends that we've kind of grown to, you know, you know, people that we've we've grown to call friends and family. You know, it's like the the people that really kind of make all this happen. I'd love to get everybody together for that. So I'd like to actually say let's do that over duck quesadillas, but I'm not sure how the seating situation would work. Yeah, that's the only issue. So once that happens, man, we're going to talk about and and we have um. I don't want to spill the beans on some of the other stuff that we've been talking about. What, but uh, there are events that are on the horizon. You know, dude. I you yeah. know there's there's I, one I, in I particular. Threw a, I threw a good one your way yeah. this, this uh, weekend, and you your eyebrows raised because you know I, while I we I, I should make mention of this. Yep. What that old glory trip? I had Nelson with me. Yep. Because um, he had not met Joe, and he had the, you know he had nothing going on. I said, well, why don't you come out with me? Yeah. We'll go drop this stuff off. You know, check out old glory and blah blah blah, and. Um, on the way back, we had a discussion about um, a couple things that happened locally that have gone by the wayside even prior to COVID, and we think there might be a possibility of resurrecting them with our own special I think and Bigs twist on yeah. them. So more to come on that. I mean, that honestly, that's way on the back burner. That's post-COVID stuff, but yep. the, hey, the vaccines are coming out, and uh, 
hopefully we can get to a point in this country where things get to some semblance of normal. Yeah, that be that would be absolutely amazing. I did uh, on on one of my lives over the week on Instagram. I did mention that uh, that the Jigs and Bigs listener tournaments were coming, and and yes. the, the the plan is, you know, I think what we're going to do is we're going to borrow um, some of the uh, practices that we've got laid out for the Chronic Trip stuff, as far as making it, you know, fun and sort of an, an even playing field for everybody. I love the idea of the point system, things like that. But we're also uh, we're going to be using Fish Donkey for that. So if you're ready to jump in and, and join the Chronic Trips tournament, leave that app on your phone because you'll be able to use the Fish Donkey app for the Jigs and Bigs um, alternating tournaments as well. It's it's going to be a lot of fun, trust me. And hey. and you know the idea of possibly doing something philanthropic with this, I think is it it strikes a big chord with me. I think that would be amazing. Hey, maybe we could wrap it up somehow and uh, make mass uh, fishing spots great again. That's what I'm thinking. Because yeah. if they need bags, you know, they got to pay for that shit out of their own pocket as far as I know. Definitely. Definitely. So, so yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea. We'll talk to Brett about that. Maybe make that make that happen. Awesome. I love it, dude. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, if you don't have anything else to go, I say we go ahead and uh, jump into this interview with Joseph Martin. Some of you guys know Joseph Martin from Instagram. Uh, you can follow him, Joseph, M-A-R, the number 10, Joseph Martin. Uh, he's a great dude. He is dedicated to this sport he is dedicated to doing this in fact we talked late friday night he had a tournament the next morning and uh i mean he's a he's a hardcore guy he goes for it and uh Dude, he sent me the artwork for, or he sent me a picture because I ask, I ask uh, pretty much all the guests to try to send me a, a picture of of a big catch, something they want to show off, and he sent me an absolute like slaunch, just a giant. And I came up with two mock ups of what the artwork was looking at, and I had a vote come across, and we have a winner. So I'll go ahead and get that out there uh, this week, tomorrow, awesome. tonight. I'll be putting that online tonight for you guys. So you know we're. You know, Tuesday, you'll have your uh, your episode ready to go. You'll be able to wake up and get your jigs and bigs goodness. One other thing I do want to mention, though, before we get into this interview, uh, is that, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we would love to uh, see this audience grow uh, even more. So we just want to take a moment to ask all of our listeners that uh, if, uh, if you like what we do here and you, you're into the show, please uh, do, do us a favor and uh, just share it with a couple of friends, a couple of friends that you know that really like fishing. Send them over our way, uh, you know, let let us know, uh, you know, if you're if you're you know if, if you love the show. Also, with a, a review over on uh, whatever your platform is. If you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, leave a review there. Uh, we're on Stitcher as well. You can leave a review there too. Um, leave us a review. Let us know what you think. Uh, we would love to get. Uh, Kind of see the audience grow and grow and grow and see what what can happen uh, by the time we hit that uh, that year mark this April. I'm I'm really excited about that. And speaking of that, I, I should say I posted on Instagram earlier about the goal that I initially set out with trying to hit 10k uh, for followers in a year on Instagram. And I can't believe what we we crossed over 8k over the what was it Thursday we hit the 8k mark, and like holy cow. Major thank you to everybody for that. You guys are amazing. It, it wouldn't have happened without you. Uh, we both appreciate you very, very much. Uh, you guys absolutely are the best uh, listening audience that we we could ever have. So I just hope that the stuff we've got lined up for you uh, in, down the road is uh, is is up to snuff, and that you guys really enjoy it. So from the from the way that the feedback that I've been getting, it sounds that that way. I got a DM from. Uh, Roadkill Nick. And how is Roadkill doing this week? I guess he's doing okay, but he he told me he's looking forward to the shit show. He said he's, he thinks it's going to make uh, his shifts at work a little bit more bearable. I'm like, that's that's awesome, man. And awesome, then yeah. when we get the, the tournament stuff going for MAKB and we have reports on all that, there's going to be Jigs and Bigs content like all summer long all kinds of stuff for you whether you want updates on tournament stuff whether you want you know this sort of general fishing talk or you're looking for more like of that entertainment you know uh, end of things like we've kind of got it all happening for you a uh, huge announcement coming uh the as we get into february like big big stuff on the way we've got uh giveaways that we'll be doing more and more regularly now and like i said we're only about six months away from spring so let's go ahead we'll get into this interview guys we'll be right back with Joe Martin after this.
Jigs and Bigs is proud to announce we're being supported by Old Glory Outdoors. They're a veteran-owned company that carries fishing and hunting gear. Plus, they're highly active in supporting veteran organizations and charities. Old Glory is an authorized dealer of favorite rods, FX rods, Guggen baits, X-Zone lures, Sixth Sense, and many more. There's a brick-and-mortar store located in East Brookfield, Massachusetts, but you can also order online at oldgloryoutdoors.com. They ship anywhere in the lower 48 states or order online and pick up at the store. When you order, use the promo code Jigs and Bigs, and you'll save 10% off your complete order. Plus, you'll help support the show. Make sure to check out the apparel line called OGO Gear while you're there. Old Glory Outdoors believes in the slogan, start them young, to keep kids away from screens and enjoying nature. They've got a full array of live bait too. Check out oldgloryoutdoors.com and use the promo code Jigs and Bigs, save some money, and gear up now. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Bobby Roast Beef, and it's interview time. We're back. We got our uh, our special guest for this this episode for you guys. We have uh, calling all the way down from the Bayou. We have Joseph Martin. You n- might know him from Instagram as Joseph M R Ten. How you doing, Joseph? What's up? Pretty good, man. Actually, uh, fixing to hook the boat up. I got a little tournament tomorrow morning. You know, I saw that, that you were heading out, going to the tournament. Then you're watching the fight afterwards? Yes. Nice. Definitely watching that. Uh, really watching that. Cool, man. So uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to swap some stories. We're going to talk fishing. Uh, what's the, uh, what are the, the details on the tournament tomorrow? A lot of boats or? No, I mean, I've seen it pull up to around 20, maybe a little over 20 max. It's just a little uh, cookie jar bass tournament they have every saturday in chalmette it's like a 25 dollar entry fee fish oh, from cool. daylight to noon so it's like a pretty easy not yeah. a lot of you know it's not a that big of a deal it's just like a little fun tournament that's some guys awesome get together yeah, catch like, a few fish drink some beer afterwards yep like a little pickup tournament that's awesome dude that sounds great so tell me the story about uh you know tell me how you discovered fishing like the way fishing as a pastime was introduced to your life the and then also like tell me how it grew to become the 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 point where you carry the passion for it that you have now to where you're competing and, and you're out there. I mean, you're, you're out on the water all the time, right? Yeah, man. I try to, I get out on the water as much as I can. Definitely, you know, pretty much every Saturday and Sunday. And if, yep. uh, right now with the daylight savings, it gets dark over here around about five thirty, and I get off at four. So I don't really have time in the afternoons, but, uh, I started off, man, you know, a lot of people can like remember their first bass or that first fish they caught, but I've yep. literally been doing this since before I can, even remember you know yeah but as far as like the tournament tournament deal um i fished my first tournament i believe i was 12 or 13 they had a youth tournament and uh i caught one fish that day and i ended up winning the tournament no kidding and i kind of like yeah it was crazy it was like one 14 inch fish yep and uh, i remember walking up like you know kind of sad that i only caught one fish and i'm all walking up to the way in and people were like man you got something there you know i thought they were just like messing with me you know yeah just a kid walking up with one fish and a weigh-in bag and i weigh in they're like oh you know uh looks like you might you might win this thing and i'm like there's no way it's one 14 inch fish you know? yeah but no. uh since then it man this is what i what i want to do yeah there's nothing you know this is what i really want to turn into a career one day that's awesome, man. Well, good. I mean, I, I hope you're able to make it happen. You know, I mean, that's 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 the beauty about about this as as a sport. You know, it, it's so young. You know, I mean, when you compare it to other other competitive events, you know, it is. It's so young in comparison that uh, you know tournament tournament bass fishing has only been going on in you know within a few generations versus you look at something like baseball you know <laughs> it's like that's been going yeah. on forever so it's like it, it's it's unbelievable the 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 transformation that it's kind of become and it's like it's just amazing let's talk about like your particulars for like this the stuff that you like when you're going out on the water as far as like seasons of the year what's your favorite season to be out there man i tell you what normally i'm hunting really hard this time of year yep and uh the last couple of years, the ducks, as far as Louisiana, they haven't been coming down like they normally do. They haven't been migrating quite as quite as good as normal. Yep. And uh, last year, I wasted a lot of time hunting. So this year, I said, you know, screw it. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna waste my time chasing ducks that aren't here. So I fished all winter. Yeah. And man, I've been tearing them up. 
Nice. Like this fall and winter, there's like, yeah, like in Louisiana, you know, shit, everybody hunts and fishes. Like yep. that's what they do. And when hunting season rolls around, everybody makes that transition. Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty much out there by myself yeah. in all these places, like no other boats and just whacking them, man. I've been averaging like no shit, probably 50, 60 fish a trip. Get out. Bass. Yeah. Holy crap, dude. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's in the, that's in the spillway. Like my home water, I would consider to be uh, the Chaffalaya Basin. Okay, is where I is my basically my home water. So it's where I fish the most. Yep. And uh, the river stayed down. That it's it's a river fishery. So when the water's low, the fishing's good. When the water's high, the fishing sucks. Yeah. And we got lucky this year, and the water stayed low. Nice. for a while and uh man i've been just been whacking them that's that's awesome man you know it's funny that you make that 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 comparison about like when when hunting season kind of comes around because we kind of experience that too once you get to like that once the fall turnover kind of hits for us we we see that a lot and then i mean once really there's there's two things that kind of happen first is <laughs> football once people start throwing around the pigskin it's like you lose such a percentage of of fishermen out on the water and then, you know, when you get into, especially deer season specifically, that's when, like, everybody just kind of drops off, you know, and, and people forget about bass fishing. And it's like, this year, I don't think I really took as much advantage as I should have. I think the next year's going to be a whole other animal. But that's a really, really good point. 60 in a day? Dude, I... I Dude, I, it's been crazy. And, like, just not, like, finesse fishing them you know just like power fishing with a spinner bait or a yeah. crank bait or a buzz bait like if we get a couple of days of like 70 degree weather mm-hmm. and that water temperature gets in like anywhere in the 50s 50 51 50 53 i've been hammering on a buzz bait too no kidding it's crazy that is freaking killer man you're absolutely killing it is is there any kind of like a, a weather condition or anything that'll just make you decide to say screw it i'm not going out or i'm calling it a day no, dude, I don't, I quit doing that. I, there's a reason we all have, you know, $200, $300 rain gear yep. and shit like that. It's just, there's no excuse for me not to be out there. The only time I ever really get off the water is mm-hmm. if the lightning's really bad and really close. I'll go find like a houseboat or someone's camp or something and dock my boat and get up under their yeah, porch, that, wait the <laughs> wait the storm out. You got to when it's when it's that bad. You definitely have to. Um, now you said you mainly oh, yeah. mainly fish that that basin area and that river system. Are you do you prefer to fish rivers or do you like like larger lakes or small ponds and doing some pond hopping? Like, what's your preferred body of water? Man, here in South Louisiana, everything we have shallow, so mainly just river or bayous and shallow water lakes, and we don't we don't have. I, there's no reservoir anywhere even close to me i have to drive the closest reservoir is probably lake okissa in mississippi and it's mm. probably two hours from me gotcha but um yeah we're all just you know cypress trees and hydrilla and milfoil yep. and that's the kind of fishing we do down here when you're in that area is that all tidal like it does it generally not the spillways not now whenever i say the spillway that's just me talking like I'm talking to somebody down here. Like mm-hmm. if I, if I say the spillway, they know I'm talking about the whole entire, a Chaffalaya spillway, a Chaffalaya basin. Gotcha. That's the lower ends title. Cause the Chaffalaya river dumps into the Gulf. Mm-hmm. But, uh, up there where I fish pretty much North of uh highway 90 in Morgan city is it's not that title. Oh, okay. All right. But that's not the, that's the main place I fish, but I also fish like, uh, Lake Verrett and, the marsh around new orleans that's where i'm going tomorrow for that tournament is oh, uh, nice. in chalmette louisiana very nice um let's talk baits like you mentioned you mentioned buzz baits and you mentioned power fishing what's your like your why don't you give me like your top three confidence baits Oof, top three confidence baits yeah stuff let's that you're see. like when it gets tough you 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 know you can get it done oh for first things got to be just a texas rig on like a quarter ounce or five sixteenths um, with really any kind of crawl bait, I've been flipping that missile baits crawl father a lot lately. I have a ton of confidence in it. Um, really down here, if, if I know, if I down here, if I need to win a tournament, mm-hmm. it pretty much gets done 
with a beefy rod and braid rather rather if it's punching with a quarter i mean with a like an ounce ounce and a quarter weight yeah. or throwing a frog that's what pretty much wins tournaments down here but i do also a, a crankbait either a square bill or like a bandit 200 yep man i've that little bait's put some money in my pocket <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man <laughs> now let's talk now actually we're going right out, out from one tackle question to another you've probably heard that saying before that fishing tackle catches more more fishermen than they'll actually catch fish in in your opinion what do you think is the most ridiculous trend that's happened in the fishing tackle industry in your lifetime and the follow-up question to that is have you been guilty of trying it I thought about, I've been listening to a couple of jigs and bigs today, and I thought about this question. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I can't get like the banjo minnow out of my head. Yeah. The yes. banjo minnow and the other one, whenever I was like, you know, a little 10, 11 year old kid that loved to fish, mm -hmm. there was always this infomercial that would come on late at night that was like the mighty bite lure, if you know what I'm talking about. That's, a, I haven't heard anybody mention that one. I'm going to go, go ahead, tell me about it. I'm going to Google it right now to get an image. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was called the mighty bike but it was something that would you know would come on tv at like two o'clock in the morning or something like that and they'd run an infomercial on it and it was just like a basically a paddle tail swim bait that had like a bite taken out the belly and it showed like a little you know it had like like a little blood mark around the bite and you could like stick a scent in the in the bite mark yeah yeah you're absolutely but right that's, holy crap that's another one that comes to mind oh yeah did you that's, just Google it? I just looked at it. Yeah, and that's exactly it. It's called the Mighty Bite. It does. It looks like a paddle tail, but it's got this groove, almost like a wooden spoon, like it like would wrap around there. No I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would that would come on like late at night on like the outdoor channel or something, you know, and just being like a twelve year old kid, I was like, Man, yeah, if I just had that one bait, I could probably, you know, catch every fish in the pond or something like that. Absolutely. Who have you have you tried it? No, <laughs> <laughs> that's I've always never, my favorite. I love. I them. never, I never bought that, and yep. I never bought the banjo minnow. But oh, from yeah. like, honestly, that banjo minnow, that little infomercial they it would run, that banjo minnow looked like it would it would catch a fish, you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And and you know that's the thing, especially bass. They're just they're savages. You know, they will eat anything, and it's like you know, uh, natural presentation, unnatural presentation. Sometimes you're throwing stuff that almost intentionally does not look like it belongs in the water and they'll just, they'll just bite it. You know, I think I was just talking tonight with Sean, the fisherman at, at my uh, trivia event. I was talking about it. I saw a video. Um, it was like the, I was the Guggen squads, like top, like 20 moments of 2020 or sort of top 10 moments. And one of them, there was uh Lake fork guy was on, on a boat in uh, one of the Great Lakes. I think it was like Lake Michigan. And he caught almost a five-pound smallie on, I think it was a Ned Head with a cheese curd on it. And that was like the challenge. Like, can you catch a fish on a, on, on a curd? And, and he nailed it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. fish will eat anything, you know? If you if you present it to them and, you know, their, their instinct is to react, it's, they're, they're, gonna, they're just going to tear it up. Am oh I, yeah, if they're if the fish are like turned on, oh it's, yeah, it, it can be easy. Yeah, <laughs> but sometimes, but you know, most of the time, it's it's not that way. It's true. What about like if you had to go finesse? What's your favorite uh, presentation? Oh man, I barely ever go finesse. I, that's exactly I why should, I, love, I love asking I this question. Way more. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Man, a weightless cinco. I'm with you, dude will get bit like crazy and a fluke too but yep. even when i throw a fluke i tend to power fish a fluke <laughs> fast enough on top of the water yeah but. oh yeah I've, I've heard that like like t uh, fishing a, a fluke top water is is amazing um you know you can use it like a jerk bait but the same the same can be said about a senko you know it's just so void of any yep. defining shape you can do so much with it and up here we have chain pickerel and i have caught just monsters on a weightless senko unintentionally but you know it, it it's freaking unbelievable yeah uh the white lacinko definitely yeah definitely just i mean it gets bit anywhere and i feel like anywhere in the country 
Uh, I agree. Now let's talk. I'm a I'm a big believer in you know when you're going out fishing and it's it's tough. It, it's sometimes sometimes it, it's tough uh, when you're when you're so used to competing if you're if you're doing tournament fishing. But I'm a big believer in uh, who you're with. Kind of makes the experience that much better. So think like when you're fun fishing and stuff. Give me a list of of three people that you would love to fish with, and they can be living or dead. Three people that I would love to fish with. Yep. Let's see. Man, I would love to fish with my great grandfather. Yeah, never met him uh, on my my dad's side. Yep. Supposedly he was a uh, he was like a bass fisherman from way back. You know, like yep. had the old bass boat when they first came out. You know, would throw a spinner bait all day, and back when you could just catch as many fish as you wanted to. Yeah, just crush them. Crush them. Yeah, that's probably where I get this this passion from. Oh yeah, I think I think that for sure. definitely definitely comes into play when you look back and you know in somebody's lineage, you'll find that you know people that really are into the outdoors, whether it be hunting, fishing, hiking, skiing, something. There's somebody along you know their family tree that kind of like shared that passion. I, I don't know. It's just I think it's something almost like genetic that just gets passed on. Yeah, like I said, he was a bass fisherman back when the bass fishing wasn't as popular as it is now. Mm -hmm. You know. Back when you had to like, he probably had a boat with a motor and he had to put the motor on the boat when he got to the lake. Every time. Deal. <laughs> yep, absolutely, yeah, every time. man. Uh, another person, let's see. Um, man, I'd love to fish with Ike, honestly. I'm, I'm with you. Ike and Nelly, he's, you know, he's, I'm not going to say he's like me, but I'm not the typical like bass fisherman you know what i mean i mean i, I grew up skateboarding yep. skateboarding and bass fishing that's not a mix that you see very often but you know i'd always see ike going crazy and being like not normal mm -hmm. wearing wearing vans and skate shoes on the front deck of his boat yep fishing a tournament yeah so ike's one of them for sure mm -hmm. and uh and maybe either matt matt robertson he's a new guy yeah coming up he just he just made the elite series through the opens that's awesome him or uh man I, I, I still have to say probably carl jockinson i just listened to him on uh bass talk live oh okay yep i'm a podcast junkie dude i, I there's like that. six of them that i just follow like crazy like yeah. i barely listen to music anymore I'm I'm kind of the same way, podcast. you know, and it's it's it, it's kind of shitty that I'm like that because I'm a DJ for crying out loud. I shouldn't, you know, I should yeah, like, get I the same joy out of music. Like, but. I enjoy music, but yeah. all day I'm just like listening between like you, Stray Cast, Bass Talk Live, Ike Live, and That's then amazing. The, there's like some skateboard ones I follow. Yep, I'm glad Rogan moved to Spotify because I don't have Spotify and I just haven't been following it. That's you mm -hmm. know, probably four hours a week that I don't listen to anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah i would say probably carl jockin i just listened to him and the way he the way he made it is probably the same way i'm gonna have to do it put yeah. everything on the line probably lose everything run out of money and then it'll probably just eventually happen one day because there's yeah. no other the way i see it right now there's no other option for me yeah i gotta i gotta make it happen oh i hear you man i definitely hear you how how, how old were you when you first got into a boat like like your own boat my own boat. Yeah. Um, I would say, man, I bought this bass tracker when I was, I would say six, 16 or 17. Yep. I bought a bass tracker and went through hell getting paperwork yeah. straight on it. So I pretty much had it for like a year and could never use it. And then, uh, I'd probably say 18. I bought this little aluminum boat I got now. Oh, okay. Yeah. But my dad always had a boat, uh, Maybe not always, but probably since the time I was 10 or 11, he'd have a bass boat that I could use whenever I wanted to, pretty much. That's awesome, man. That is never awesome. like the big fancy new ones, but you know, something that started and had a trolling motor on it and mm -hmm. we could take somewhere. You ever do any kayak fishing at all? No, dude, but I kind of want to get into it. I, you know what, man? If we ever, ever get to fish together, we're going to kayak fish together. <laughs> It's gonna I, be good. <laughs> yeah, dude, I want to do it. I have a I have a P row that I kind of 
I know oh, you right. probably don't know what that is. If you know what a Piro is, I uh, I have watched some swamp people in my life. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it's pretty much it's, yeah. it's a canoe. It's a yeah. fucking it's a Cajun canoe. Yep, a cute ass canoe. I have one of those, but it's not that stable. It's nothing like a kayak. But That's, I have caught yeah. one fish out of it standing up, and it like drug you me around. Stand the pond on that sucker. Was, Huh? You stand on that thing? I did. Oh my I got a, God. like I said, dude, I got a, I've been skateboarding since I was five. That's I have true. a little bit of balance. That's true. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that's very, very true. It's it's funny, man. My 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 kayak that I'm using right now is thirteen feet long. And it's at the widest point I think it's like thirty three or thirty six inches wide. And I, I won't stand up on it. No way. You know. But I mean, you know, maybe someday we'll get there. I've I've dumped the thing to way too many times, but I love it. It's it's amazing. Oh yeah, dude. If I get a kayak, I'm definitely gonna get one that I can stand up in. Yeah. Dude, I, I can't I I mean I'm not gonna say I can't fish sitting down. Yeah. But I don't do it unless my back is just out completely yeah. and then I'll sit down. Yeah. It's, I mean, there, there, it, it's interesting too, because what, what I found is I, I had the idea of when I was getting into a kayak that I wanted to get as, as large a platform as possible so I could stand. And then I realized I'm like, you know what? I can, I can fish and get all kinds of access to everything from that aspect. And because I'm can put myself almost anywhere with this, I don't really have to stand. I mean, the one difference is like, if you're pitching and flipping, you know, like to, to get that done properly. But as far as if you're able to access and, and cast, it's, it's amazing. The one thing about kayak fishing, and this kind of, kind of goes right into the follow up here. You're from that part of the country that blows my mind. Have you ever had any like really crazy stories that involve gators while you're fishing? Dude, not really. Really? Oh, I'll tell you what I did see probably like three years ago. I was in, uh, Lake Fossey Point, which is a lake in South Louisiana. Yep. And uh, I saw it was probably the biggest alligator I've ever seen in my life. It oh, was really? probably like 13, 14 foot or something like that. And it had like a six or seven foot alligator in its fucking mouth just swimming around. Like swimming around up close to my boat. Like I dare you to like I just I dare you to fall in. <laughs> it was crazy like he was literally just he wasn't even eating it he was just swimming around with it like dead in his mouth on freaking like man. that's crazy but they don't really they don't really mess with anybody man if if they did so many people ski and swim and all yeah. these bodies we got and no one like i can't tell you the last time i heard of someone getting attacked by an alligator yeah that's crazy, man. I'm looking, you're saying it's like 13, 14 feet and I'm, I'm in, I'm in my, like the studio that I use is, is my basement and I keep my kayak in here off season for mods and stuff and, and any kind of maintenance. And I'm looking over here and I'm like, nope. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> dude, when they're big like that, they're scary. I'm yeah. Not, I mean, I'm not definitely not going to get in the water if oh, I know sure. a huge ones around, Yeah. but he's the chances of him messing with me still are slim to none. Yep. It is. It's. It's just crazy because, like, I, I know there's, there's YouTubers that are from Florida, from Alabama. I've now, now talking to you, and we've talked to Megan Long about do about gators and stuff. And I mean, it's just like it's almost just like it's a part of life. I suppose it's just the northern, like, <laughs> like the Yankee in me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, nope. <laughs> you know. Tell you what, I was fishing with Megan one time, actually, mm -hmm. where I'm going tomorrow in Chalmette, and there was this little like five foot gator that. I swear, like, wanted to get in the boat with us the whole day we were fishing. Oh, it was crazy. Like, it was coming up right next to my boat, like, basically trying to get in my boat. Huh. You ever have... And I kept just, like, slapping a frog by its nose, and it would swim off. You ever have one grab, grabs, uh, you know, a fish you had on the line? No, but they will yeah. blow up on a, on a frog or something like that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I've, I've I caught them before. Usually, it's somehow, you get them close to the boat, and they open their mouth, and the hook will come undone, but... Man, I've been handling alligators my whole life. Like, yeah. if I caught an alligator, I could catch it and you can handle get my bait out. That's yeah. cool. That's awesome. Now, uh, you mentioned that you don't necessarily listen to music, but you listen to podcasts. What is it that you listen to to kind of hype yourself up on the way to the water, or or if you're if you do like sometimes I, I know I even like to while I'm while I'm fishing, I'll listen to music. Uh, what is it you listen to to kind of like get you hyped up? Man, I definitely, I definitely still listen to music. But, uh, 
a lot of times I'll listen to like a podcast that yep. I know, like, like maybe like a Rick, a Rick clone on stray cast oh, okay. recently. Yep. The way he talks, like, it's just the dude's incredible. Like Rick clone is definitely goat status hero. <laughs> nice. And like, you know, like he had to, he, he had to pawn a shotgun one time cause he was broke out of money to make it to just for, just to afford the gas to make it to a Bassmaster Classic, he pawned a shotgun. That blows my mind. Like, the and dedication to some of these guys. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But, like, as far as music, yep. man, I've been on, like, a huge punk kick lately. Oh, nothing wrong I've just been that. listening to punk. Like, Misfits. I'm still one of those losers that uses Pandora instead of a... Uh, Instead of like Spotify or something, so I just put it on like Misfits Radio. Yeah, that's. But you know what? You know, the, just, it's kind of great. Into like just old punk. Yeah, it's kind of awesome because you pick like a, a song or a group that you're just you know just like in in the mood for and let it take you on a journey. You know, it's some, sometimes the best way to do it. It doesn't matter what app you use, really. Oh yeah, like Misfits you know? will play. It'll be like Misfits Radio or Misfits Radio will play. You know, Misfits. Minor Threat, yep. Suicidal Tendencies, Social Distortion, Bad Brains, yep. Black Flag, the whole, everything I'm trying to listen to at that time. Yep, absolutely. No, 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 oh. I, I'm with you. It, you know, and, and it's good. It gets you in a mindset, kind of clears your head. It's funny, I, and I talk about this all the time, how how I, I for a while, was, was listening to music while I would fish, and I would have earbuds in. And I stopped that. I went fishing with uh, Delirious Angler, and he had a little Bluetooth speaker on his boat. And we're fishing on his boat, and he's like, yeah, I got to have tunes when I fish, man. He's like, I don't know if it's a, an issue for you. He's like, I, I don't know. I, I assume some people are, like, purists. And uh, I'll tell you, it was night and day, like, having an actual speaker that wasn't a headphone or anything attached to my head. Like, I was still able to kind of hear what was going around or, or with me. And it's not yeah. like, you know, you're not out there with, like, my DJ rig or something, like, cranking music at full volume. You're just kind of, like, putting something out there in the air. And it was it, – it's good. It kind of, like – you know, keeps you keeps you uh, motivated depending on what you're listening on. It's good. It's good stuff. Now, yeah, one hundred percent. I'll listen to music sometimes. Yep. Uh, sometimes I listen to, like I said, dude, I'm a podcast junkie. I literally just take in info all day long. Yep. Uh, but when I'm fishing tournaments by myself, I typically don't listen to anything. Yeah. Um, but. A guy that I fish a lot of tournaments with, I fish a, a little tournament trail here in South Louisiana called Fishes of Men. And I fish with this guy, and he always plays music in his boat. Like, that's just part of it. Yeah. We're going to be listening to something while we're fishing. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Now, what is your goal? Like, say, you know, I know I know, you said that, like, this is it for you. Like, this is your, what you're doing. Where would you like to see yourself in, like, like five to ten years? Dude, fishing for... Man, really, I want to fish for the Elite Series. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't dig Major League Fishing because I do like Major League Fishing. Mm -hmm. Or, um, yeah, but just that five-fish format is what I grew up on. Yeah. I mean, shit, it's what everybody grew up on. Yeah, it's a classic. And um, it's, it's, it's how tournament fishing, honestly, is probably yeah. no way little bass clubs and you know, small tournaments can be ran like major league fishing where every fish counts. It's just not, it's not possible. Yeah. But fishing, fishing the elite series. I want to, I want to hop in the opens mm -hmm. as soon as I, uh, as soon as I can get a boat that's, you know, that I'm not a handicap. Yep. I hear you fishing against everybody else. Yep. But it pretty much just takes money, man. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. A bass boat, even for a, for a good used bass boat, you're looking at upwards of, 30 40 grand oh uh, hands and, down yeah it's it's an ungodly amount of money yeah and then the opens are 1700 bucks a pop yeah yeah it, it's 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 dude bass fishing needs to make a change that mm -hmm. as far as that goes but then again there's enough people that are paying those entry fees and it still makes it where you got to work as hard as you possibly can to make it to the top oh for sure yeah, I mean it's it, and it, that's what I want. It definitely ain't easy, man. Not at all. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Oh yeah, have you ever traveled anywhere specifically just to fish? Yeah, I mean not really out of state. Mm -hmm. I'll make a trip to Toledo Bend every now and then. Yep, probably once or twice a year. Oh, all right, nice. Um, but I've really never. 
I've traveled because of fishing for, I had like a little three year stint back. Like I think it might've been 2015, 2016. I think I skipped 2017 and then 2018, I went to the Bassmaster Classic, wherever it was. It was Tulsa. The first one I went to was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was in Greenville, South Carolina. Second one was Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the third one was in Houston. But, uh, man, those are incredible. And with this COVID situation, I hope they can get those back going. Because that expo, if you've never been to a Bassmaster Classic expo, and you're a bass fisherman, you're missing out. Yeah. It's like a kid in a candy store. It's crazy. That's what I've heard. And that was a big um, – well, I'm not sure if you if you listened. To, there's this podcast I, I listen to a lot called Tackle Talk. And in, in one of the recent episodes, they had changed the date of, of that. Cl- and I think that the primary reason why they changed the date was so that they would be able to pull off that expo because – you know, when they, I, I mean, I'm assuming, but the booths alone to put your company in at that expo have got to go at a significant rate. That's a lot of money they would lose to not do that expo. So one of these days we'll, oh, we'll, we'll dude, go and 100%. check it out. But one of these days, COVID just sucks for that. <laughs> you know, there's so yeah, many things crazy. we want to do. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm so mad I didn't go to this last one because yeah. I could have. Mm-hmm. And, uh man it's because that was it was literally like the week before like shit started closing down yeah was that last Bassmaster classic it was it would have been like the last big thing i could have attended damn before uh before this whole covid situation yeah. but now what's about- crazy man if like i said if you've never been to one you gotta go i gotta I, i'm gonna i'm gonna have to have to make that happen there's uh I love this next question. Now, is there like a bucket list destination like anywhere in the world that you want to go to and fish before you die? Dude, any of those smallmouth factories like yeah. St. Clair or uh St. Lawrence River. Yep. Any of those places, dude, I, I got to go catch some smallmouth. Yeah. I got to. I'm like with you. The, there's no smallmouth anywhere near Louisiana. Yeah, it's a it's a whole I've always I've always ha- had this feeling that like smallmouth are just special, you know? And yeah. and I think uh I think it's they're they're just they're amazing species. It, they're absolutely killer. Yeah, man. <laughs> I definitely definitely agree with that. Definitely. Uh what's your generally like what are you taking out for an arsenal when you go out for a tournament? Like how many combos? Um, and, and what are you kind of, how, what's your plan of attack? Like, what are you thinking? Like, how are you going to throw things? Man, I usually, I usually probably have 10 to 15 combos with me. Um, what's on the front deck of my boat? Like tomorrow morning, I'm going to have a crankbait, a chatterbait, a spinnerbait, a punching rig, uh, a light flipping rig like a thing i i just tied on a five sixteenths mm-hmm. um a jig i don't know if i said that already but those are the main ones yeah for this time of year you know i'm not really expecting too much of a top water bite tomorrow oh yeah but i'll, I'll see what the water temp is there because we have we we have been having this week's been pretty hot like some upper 60s 70s degree weather that's so awesome <laughs> This yeah, morning, dude, I, I feel bad for y'all. Yeah. Y'all with the ice and like not having open water, and then the ice isn't thick enough to go ice fishing. Like I would lose my mind. Bro. I I woke up this morning and it was twenty two degrees. Yeah, like and screw that, that. That's, that's not, not it, the coldest that it's been. Like a couple years ago, we had a really bad winter up here where we were below zero multiple times for extended periods, and it was terrible. It's uh yeah, living up north. Like I love it because I only because I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> That's the only reason why I love it. Every and the older I get, the more I'm like, I, I could move to. South yeah, Carolina. dude. Like two weeks ago, I was scouting. Yeah, dude. I, I couldn't handle it. A couple of weeks ago, we had uh, lows were like around thirty. High was like fifty, fifty one, fifty two. And I was uh, I have a houseboat that's in the Chafalaya Basin, oh, and nice. I was staying there scouting for a, a tournament I had last weekend, yep. and uh. Dude, I was, I was fucking freezing. It was horrible. And like my boat, I was in my aluminum boat. It doesn't, it's not very fast. It runs about 40. Yep. But I went and bought like a full like street bike helmet to wear when I'm running. <laughs> yep. So my face isn't just freezing, frozen. Yeah. 
because I, I didn't really buy it for that boat, but the guy that I fished Fishers of Men with, he runs like this brand new Blazer 650 tour. He's got a, a Yamaha 250 SHO. Oh, yeah. And we're running like, I saw 82 miles an hour. Um, no. Saturday fishing a tournament. That was going downstream in the Chafalaya River. Going upstream, I saw 79. That's insane. Yeah, and it's a single console, so there's no, there's a console in front of him, but there's no console in front of me. You're and I'm just, just getting like the wind. motorcycle helmet, yep. full rain gear, just freezing to death. Damn, damn, man! I I don't think I've on a bass boat. I don't think I've gotten any faster than like fifty, but that was probably had to do with the fact that where we were, we were fishing this river, the Connecticut River, and the water level is really low, so. Got to gotta play oh, it yeah. smart. Got to play it smart, but I'm like... Oh, dude. And even, even that... Fishing in Louisiana, <laughs> fishing in Louisiana it's, it's it's not when, it's or it's not if, it's when you're going to just destroy a lower unit or something like that. There's yep. so many stumps and just shit in the water everywhere. Because everything we have is shallow, dude. Yeah. Like, I'll run across... Like, if you don't know where you're at in the basin... In the Chafla Basin, like yep. you better not stop because if, if you get off plane, you might be on a mud flat. Oh no shit! <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's Same sh- thing with the marsh and anywhere in Louisiana, really. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy, dude. Everything we have is just swampy and shallow. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, and it, it's such a, a weird situation because, like, like you said, like all the stumps and and everything there, like that stuff makes for great fishing. You know what I mean? It's 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 great you know, stuff for fish to kind of tuck up against. And like, it's, it's awesome. Too much of it makes it kind of tricky too. Cause then you got to find them. But you know, at, at the same time, you're also like, yeah, the damage it can do to, you know, to ripping off a transducer or like busting, you know, your prop or whatever. It, it, I can't oh, even dude, I've gone through so many transducers on my little boat. Yeah. It's like my transducer is knocked off my boat right now. Like tomorrow, tomorrow when I get to that tournament. Yeah. I'm going to put my boat in the water. I'm going to throw my transducer in the water just to see, just for it to pick up the water temperature. And then I'm going to pull it back out yep. and throw it on the back deck of my boat. Yeah. <laughs> that's Sometimes that's how, how it is. So uh, for our last couple of questions, um, the, here's what we're going to do. Oh, actually, I got one more I want to go to. And I'm interested. I'm really, I, I, I love this, especially when I ask the question about like your typical like arsenal for, for when going out for the day. Anytime somebody gives me a number that's like a double digit number for, for the combos that they would bring, I'm always interested how this next question is going to play out. So, so the little like the jigs and bigs challenge that we have is that you're, you're being sent to an unnamed body of water that you've never fished before. The only thing that you kind of know is that there are, the little patches of like everything it doesn't it's not chalked up uh, full of grass uh it, it's not all rocks but there's a little bit of everything here and there you got some lilies on there this one good sized lake and it's partly cloudy not a ton of wind but you can build one combo it can be from your arsenal it could be something that you're just this would be the, what you would pick if you had to go new whatever it is but you can have one it's one rod one reel and how are you spooling it up Ooh, it's going to be definitely a seven foot medium heavy with probably a seven one to one gear ratio reel. Yep. Bay caster for sure. Dude, I own like one spinning rod, maybe out of like the 20 things I own. Um, do I need to, do I need to pick a bait? No, you don't, you don't. I mean, you can, if you want, if you want to go that far, sure. What are you going to spool it up with? 15, uh, 17 pound fluorocarbon. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I actually, I have that combo. (laughs) And that's kind of like my, my, when I go bank fishing, I bring that and there's a spinning combo that I'll take with me. And I, I can throw pretty much everything except like the super heavy swim baits and like the, the whopper plopper 190 and you know, the, the really big stuff, but I can get the job done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's that that's awesome. Um, now this is this is my favorite right here. So two little stories that I kind of need you to share with me is the 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 one moment when you were on the water that was like the most proud you've ever been. It could be you know a, a PB or it could be you know you taught somebody something. Maybe something went wrong and you handled it. Whatever it is that you're like you're like super proud of. And then on the other side of things, I need you to give me that story that's the biggest. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, no, no. I don't want the biggest fail. I want the funniest story for the second one. 
All right. So the first one, the proudest I've ever been. Man, I'm trying to think if it's a tournament win or that PB. That's you see, that's that's tough because you're like the PB is sort of like it's a benchmark, you know. But if if it's a tournament win, like you could have slugged it out all day, you know. I mean, who knows, dude? I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say that tournament. It's actually on YouTube. If anybody oh, really? wants to go watch it, the whole day is on YouTube, except for the the first fish I caught was actually the big one. It was like five three or five four, I think. Yeah, nice. But uh, just everything went perfect that day. That's the best. And I caught all these fish off of. I caught a five pounder. Like it was five three, uh, two fish over three pounds, and a two pounder off the same dock, off the same post. No, oh, really? Yeah. Did you just like keep coming back to it, or did you just clean well, up? Dude, it was a it was our club classic tournament. Uh, oh, all right. It was in this past. It was either June or June. No, it was. I'm not sure when it was, but it was our last club club tournament of the year. And uh, everybody launches. We didn't have like a takeoff time. Yep. So uh, everybody's just like launching their boats and running in the pitch black. But I my back running light didn't work on my boat. So I was like, shit. And it was a real like misty, foggy morning. And I didn't want to get hit by like some bass boat going 80 miles an hour. Definitely. So I was like, screw it. I'm just going to wait for the sun to come up. And while I'm waiting for the sun to come up, I'm noticing like these little six inch bass busting on like the, uh, the light uh -huh. on the dock of the boat launch. And I'm like, Oh shit. Okay. First cast was like, we couldn't wet a line till like six thirty five or something yeah. like that. So whatever that time was, it rolls around. I start fishing around the dock. Didn't get bit. I looked down about 200 yards and there's a light on a pier, like a fish light, you know, pointing directly at the water. Oh yeah. So I was like, you know, screw it. I'm gonna go idle over there. So I idle over there first cast with like a white uh chatterbait jackhammer okay boom i catch i catch that five three and i'm like oh my god like i'm like holy shit i done caught my kicker for the day you know it's 6 40 i got plenty of time to finish this limit out yep and uh i throw that chatterbait a few more times actually i start my gopro right after i catch that fish nice uh throw the chatterbait a couple times nothing pick up a crankbait first cast catch one like three something i'm like holy shit yeah you don't leave fish couple, to find fish yeah mm -hmm. a couple casts later i catch one three and then i run around the whole day and finish my limit out and then right before weigh-in i stop at that dock again and catch one over three pounds on a oh, nice. uh, it's either crawfather missile baits crawfather or like a speed crawl or something yep but that day was just everything went perfect yeah that's the best that's awesome. I could totally see why that makes for that moment. That is huge, man. And then I didn't even know it was our club classic. So like we only had 11 or 12 boats, but I won all that extra money from the year. So it was like almost a $2,000 day. That's insane. It was like 1700 and something bucks. I won that day. That's great. That's which a, like blew my mind. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge day. That's a huge day on the water. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Now what about, what about the funniest thing that's happened to you when you've been out there? Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that's just like crazy that happened. And you know, I've been listening to podcasts. Yep. Like your podcast all day, and I knew this was coming, and I should have been thinking about it. Um, Man. What is something funny that's happened? Dude, I'm just like drawing blanks. I know it's it's the worst. It's happened to like every guest. <laughs> I ask them this yeah. question, they're just like, or or there are there are a few that will write down and take notes, and they'll be like, okay, well, this is what happened. I knew this was coming. I'm ready with this one. I'm like, yeah, you're, I that's, that's few what far I done. Um, well, if you have like the biggest fail, you can give me that too. The biggest fail, like. Hmm dropping gear over the side of the boat i mean never tell you what happened like recently that. Okay. that just this is a this is a good one that happened like saturday it's really not that good but it's the best one i can come up with right now it'll do the job i'm fishing it's a concept i'm fishing with uh i'm throwing a spinner bait mm -hmm. and i'm throwing it on a concept uh concept a okay and i'm fishing and man i've i've heard you like today i heard you i know you like your concept yeah i i'm all right i like it but like my concept it it's never really one attack right 
ever. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. Like I can't get it. I can get it tuned, but every now and then it's like someone just goes in there and turns all the brakes off. It's weird. Oh, like really? sometimes it'll cast and it's like free spooling and sometimes it'll cast and it's like perfect. It's yeah. weird. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going wrong with it, but I'm fishing. I'm fishing with it. A spinner bait and my side plate just fucking pops off and goes straight in the water. I just watch it sink to the bottom. Is it an eight? So now I have a concept with no side plate. It, is it? Is it? Oh, whoa! You lost it in the water. Yeah, it just like popped off, hit the deck, oh, popped dude. in the water. So it's funny you say that <laughs> because uh, Sean, Sean the fisherman, and I we have the identical reel just in different gear ratios. So we've got the Concept A two. Uh, we 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 demoed this one out, and I mean I've had you know great use with it. But one thing that I've noticed is like I'm a big Corrado fan. You know, and I find that the two have similar braking systems. Like you set them. The one thing that I do like about the Corrado is that there is uh, a little bit of an adjustment, like a more or less kind of adjustment where you can tweak in between and fine tune the brakes. Uh, you don't really have that necessarily on the on the A2. Yeah, I don't, I don't think on the A2 there's anything on the exterior that's in there. You set them on the inside and you're good. And one thing that I have noticed about the, the Concept A2 is that it definitely leans more toward the looser side than the tight brakes. So mine are set to the max, and it's set like almost like where my Corrado or my Abu Garcia reels are set about halfway. You know, yeah. and and you know, I'll adjust, I'll adjust for my, you know, the the bait that I'm throwing at the time. But for these these reels specifically, like they're doing very specific jobs. Like with my A2, I throw a three ounce to half ounce bait. That's it. I don't go any lighter. I don't go any. Um, yeah, I don't go. I don't go any heavier than half ounce. But so like I've got it set, and it's pretty good where it is. My Corrado, I'll throw my BBZ Rat Forty. And then I'll turn around and throw, you know, a quarter ounce buzz bait. And yeah. and and I yeah. won't I won't adjust the brakes on that at all. I wonder what would happen because I'm gonna start using that A2 for some some uh swim baits and changing things up. But it's so funny you say that about that that door because that kinda happened to Sean and he was in a tournament at the time and he's in his kayak and his door popped open, but it there's like a something there that was supposed to grab it. And it stayed on, but the spool went and took a swim, and like it fell out on him. Yeah, well, this is a this yeah. is the older. This isn't the A two. This is like the original concept A. Oh, like the when original it came out. A. Yeah, like it doesn't. It does. The side plate doesn't have like a little swivel on the bottom where it, it grabs stays it. attached to the reel. Okay, it just this it just popped off. That but sucks. I can't. It's even like imagine. one of the few. I have like a couple Revos. Yep. And everything else I own is are like kind of somewhat older. Lose. Yeah. Like I probably have five bb ones oh, nice. lose bb1 which is in my opinion the best reel for the money yeah there's a lot of people that would agree with you 100 percent. that's yeah, it's kind of a beefier like reel like yep. it's not that low profile yeah. but it's just it's a workhorse man yeah yeah and you're right like for the money it's 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 affordable and it'll last it's it's killer <laughs> that's freaking dynamite i can't believe it fell off the deck of the boat <laughs> Dude, that it sucks. literally just like I'm just oh. reeling a spinner bait in and it it literally like it didn't like just fall off it like like there was a spring in there or something and it, it just fucking flew off the reel just jumped. into the water. Oh god. Could you see it like in slow motion when it happened? You were like, no. Yeah, no, dude. I was so quick with it, like it it popped off and like I'm immediately like belly down on the deck with my arm out trying to like catch it in the water and oh I just my god. barely missed it and just Dude, I, I mean, I, I know where it's at. About yeah, oh <laughs> the yeah, the bottom of the bottom of the canal I was in. Oh man, that is unbelievable. Well, hey Joseph, do me a favor, man. Go ahead and uh, let people know where they can uh, check out your stuff on social media, your YouTube channel, your Instagram. This is your opportunity to promote yourself. Uh, go ahead and, and let people know. Yeah, on Instagram, it's uh, Joseph M A R one zero, which. A lot of people don't get this, and I always thought it was a simple thing. It's like Joseph Martin. Yep. I, the, like M-A-R-1-0, Martin. The, the first time I saw your username, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I get it. Yeah. But, and uh, and YouTube is just Joseph space Martin space fishing. Awesome, um, man. I don't have that many videos on there. I need to 
I need to step my YouTube game up for sure. I think I might have four or five videos. Yep. Do me a favor that that uh, the video you were talking about where you had like the perfect day. Send me that link, and I'll leave that link for people in the episode's credit so they can check it out and see it for themselves. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I'll definitely do that. Awesome. I love it, dude. Well, hey, this was great, man. I, 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 I'm I, glad we finally got around to doing this. Awesome, Joseph. Will you have a good one? Take care of yourself, buddy. Have a great week, and good luck tomorrow on that tournament. Appreciate it, man. Y'all all right. stay safe out there. Awesome, buddy. Take care now, all right? See, everybody, I love it when a good show just kind of comes together organically. We have an amazing guest. We have great conversation leading up to it. We learn some stuff. We, uh, I feel like in, in a way, I, in, in a way, not only did we grow, um, as far as, uh, enriching our lives, but we also kind of, um, took a step back and laughed at ourselves as well. <laughs> and, and it happens and it happens. Uh, good. I, the, this is just going to be the fart episode. That's pretty much what it's going to get down to. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I am a hundred percent. Okay. With that. Oh man. Yeah. We've got uh, a lot of really good stuff. I've got the, I'll tell you as far as, uh, guests in the future, the we've, we, there, there are, are, are boxes being checked that I have been wanting to check for so long. Let's just go through the, the schedule right here. So I've got uh, 603 Bass coming up very soon. I've got, uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, I have Rachel Walka. She'll be on. I've got uh, Brad and Zach. They are slaunch doctors. They're coming up. Uh, and uh, and, and who, who else do we have lined up? Oh, we have our good old buddy from the South. Our staff biologist in Florida, Dan. Dan is coming on. We've got Brett Richards from Make uh, Massachusetts Fishing Spots great again. And who else do we have? That's as far as out as we go right now. But I'm telling you, I'm loving this new scheduling platform that I'm using. I awesome. think it's going to make life so much easier. We just have a great conversation with somebody. I leave them the link, and they can pick something that works for their schedule. And uh, so far, it's been really good. And uh, I don't know if you noticed this, Sean, but we haven't had any major dropouts for internet uh, as far as our conversation this entire show. I noted one for three seconds. I wrote the time down and everything. Oh, really? That was it. One. Oh, I haven't had anything break up on my end. Your your rewiring has been nothing short of phenomenal. Yeah, so usually, we'll get, usually we get four or five of them that last. You that, know what I mean? Yeah, they go. And I'm usually getting notifications saying like I've got instable internet or such and such and I think that that might have been the start of something very, very beautiful. So I'm okay with that for now. So I've got I've got Perfect. some work cut out for me this week because I do have an online trivia event that's coming. One of the things that I do want to mention is that uh, that this game show that we've been talking about doing with the Hookset Hoodlums Pro Staff, we're, uh, something happened in the time between when we first started brainstorming for this until now that's kind of changed things. Is that now the Pro Staff, that Hookset Hoodlums family – is huge. Uh, so we're going to have to cut down. We'll have to do it in phases and maybe write additional questions and do this as uh, kind of as things pop up and integrate some of the, you know, the pro staff with maybe some listeners and, and kind of have this thing kind of kind of take things out. So this is actually going to have more of like a Jeopardy style format where people will have a buzzer they'll be using on their mobile phone and we'll have the players call into a Zoom meeting very much like what we're doing right now and we'll do it live. There'll be, you know, graphics and people will get to see everything. It's I, I'm really really excited about this i think it's going to work out fantastic so you know awesome let me know if you need more questions we'll I'm, get there. I'm happy to jump on board yeah oh absolutely i think it's going to be a whole lot of fun i think it's going to be a blast and uh yeah so i think i think it's i gonna actually be have a, a reminder too to, to wrap oh i'm sorry i stepped on you there oh no you're good they, go ahead there there was another little bump yeah hey so uh we've got um obviously the february chronic trips is coming up but what i didn't mention in the intro was during February, we've got uh, we've got the god damn it, we've got phone calls on my new jazzy. You got ringtone. smooth jazz happening over the year. Tuned in, I'm, smooth jazz, the jigs and big thought you Yeah, I'm telling you, I I turned it to I turned my phone for the first time last week and it worked out well. I did it again. I turned it to uh, do not disturb mode. Yep, but it still rings, and I got to figure oh. that shit out. So sorry, sorry about that. So what I was saying was, let me start over again. Where's my beeping? Beep. Still on it. Beep. 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 So the Chronic Trips February uh, Elevated Online Multi-Species Tournament is up, ready for registration. You could also use that, any submissions that you uh, happen to catch during the Old Glory Outdoors 
ice fishing derby on uh, Saturday, February 6th at Quaybog. I believe it is. Am I right yes, on that? it is Quaybog. Yes. So you can go on, uh, on Facebook or Instagram. Um, Old Glory Outdoors has information on that with the fee and everything else. Uh, try that out. And anything you catch on that tournament will work for, or excuse me, on that derby. We'll also, you could also submit that for the chronic trips that month. This is how it works. You catch one fish. It's good for numerous tournaments, derbies, whatever. I love that. Yep. I am, uh, I'm, I'm adjusting my microphone so I can stand up. I'm I see thinking, that. I, I get to, I get to stare at your chest and stomach now. Oh, yes. hang on. Hang on. I'm going to adjust my camera for you. <laughs> I feel like a cam girl. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. No, this way I can just kind of stand up, and I, I I've kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing around with, with some, 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 some tricks and some tools here to kind of make uh, podcasting a little bit more interesting. There we go. Jigs and Bigs, welcome back to Jigs and Bigs behind the podcast. When we left off, Bobby had been conquering his coke and hooker problem. It's true. <laughs> Sean, meanwhile, was in the throes of a duck quesadilla addiction. We found him in a gutter with duck fat smeared all over his body, wearing no clothes. He was in a full on, uh, full on food coma, passed out in the parking lot somewhere in West Hartford. I don't know what's <laughs> wearing only a bib and a duck outfit. Oh goodness, I love it. I love it. Can't get enough. Can't yeah. get enough at all. No, it's like sometimes, sometimes it's nice to just stand up. But this, uh, I'm sitting on. <laughs> someday I'll do a behind the. Someday I'll do a, a video on the disco dungeon and show like the, the train wreck that I'm actually working in here and making this happen. I mean, somehow it seems to work, but yeah, yeah, you know, it's good nice. stuff. No, I think this was, this was a, a really great show. I was really, uh, I, I was really excited to kind of, uh, break the news and, and bring something new to light with those harmony, uh, EWG tungsten, uh, Ned heads, but, uh, Sorry. Fuck me. <laughs> Stole your thunder on that one, man. No, it's, I've, uh, I've been buying those en masse like I do the quesadillas. No. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's going to be good stuff. <clears throat> All kinds of good stuff happening, guys. Spring is coming. Um, you know, now is the time. Go through your, your gear and, and get yourself organized and that's kind of the game that we're playing right now is just kind of getting things all together so we can get out there and uh, and, 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 and and crank some fish. You know, that's the plan. Let's crank them. Yep. And then stay tuned for next week because we'll probably have a really, really unusual remote recorded show yeah. that you guys are going to want to hear. Yeah, definitely. And there's some good stuff. Good th good things are, 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 are waiting in the wings. And uh, I think... I think you guys are all really, really going to enjoy that. So we'll go ahead. We'll wrap this puppy up. Uh, have a great week, everybody. Get out there and uh, keep warm. If you're in the Northeast, it's going to be cold as hell for the uh, the, the foreseeable future right now. And, and I'm hoping that uh, we get a nice little break after that. That would be fantastic. Although this does play well, the cold temperatures leading into that uh, Old Glory fish ice fishing derby. Uh, that should be fantastic. I think yep. it's going to be really good. Yep. Um, and Ted, thanks. Thanks again to all the listeners to get us to 8K and the followers. Yeah, that's, you that's guys awesome. are awesome. Amazing. Absolutely. You guys, kick ass. You guys are, you, you kill it constantly. <laughs> so with all that said, everybody have yourself a great week. We will see you guys in seven days. We have uh, much more good stuff coming up. Lots of great guests, lots of great content for you guys. As always, uh, you know, can't tell you guys how much we appreciate you. Share this podcast with your friends. Let them know that uh, that you dig this kind of stuff and that, uh, you know, we, we're looking to grow our listeners more and more and more. And uh, we've got lots of great stuff coming for you guys. So on behalf of myself and Sean the Fisherman, have yourselves a great week, everybody, and tight life. <laughs>